Chapter 157 Third Album Dom and Mimi leaned forward to read the headlines from the newspaper. Mimi, oh wow. They're all about you, Shulan. Dom, of course. It's because Boss is the best. Mimi, your upcoming album is already breaking records. Amazing. Dom, hee hee. As expected, Boss is awesome. Mimi, youa. Shulan, can you give me a signed copy? Dom, hey. Don't ask boss for a copy. You should buy one. Mimi, uh oh. -uh. Come on. Fine, I'll just steal I mean, ask for another one from Uncle Tengfei. I'm sure he'll buy lots again. The two high-fived and laughed. Mimi, eh. What did that stupid film critic say? Someone like Iris Long. What's that supposed to mean? Is that an insult? Dom, humph. Film critic, my a asterisk asterisk. Posing as an expert when he doesn't even know what he's talking about. Iris took the newspaper from Jean Leeway and Speed read the article containing an interview with a film critic. Hmm. He's not wrong, Iris said. I'm indeed composing a film score for an indie film. And yes, they have low budget. Mimi, oh, is that true? Iris nodded, returning the newspaper back to Jean Leeway. He gave her a quick kiss on the forehead before continuing to read. Dom, humph. So what if it's an indie film with low budget? Being indie doesn't mean low quality. Boss dared to accept the offer to be their official composer so of course the story is awesome. Not that I know what the story is about because it's supposed to be a secret but I trust boss judgment. I'm sure it's a super duper great story. That film critic doesn't even know what movie he's talking about and he's already judging it. So unprofessional. And he calls himself an expert. Pway. Oh. Mimi bobbed her head. I see. You're right. I've watched awesome indie films before. How dare that film critic. He's just a hater. Haters gonna hate. Humph. Dom, yeah. The two grumbled together and bad-mouthed the critic. Iris watched them, a warm smile on her face. She didn't really care about what strangers were saying about her. But she felt grateful that she had people who would readily defend her name because they liked her as a person and not because it was their job or duty to do so. She finished eating and sipped hot ginger tea. These days, her schedule wasn't as packed to the brim. Likewise, Jean Liwei's business project was already running smoothly so his schedule also eased up. That was why they had more times like these when they could eat meals together without rushing for work. It was a Saturday. At the moment, their morning was very relaxed. But later in the afternoon, she would be guesting on a TV show. Jean Liwei didn't need to go to work today. He said that he would be meeting with his brothers Lin Yihan, Wang Yingjie, and UMO later to hang out. She leaned against Jean Liwei, looking over his shoulder to read the newspaper with him. Over half of the entire entertainment section was talking about her. The main interest, however, was on her appointment as the official composer for a currently unknown film. Iris remembered how it came about. She met with JJ at his office. Tang Yi was with them and it seemed that the manager was already informed beforehand. There were two other people in the office. Iris didn't recognize them. JJ introduced them as the director and executive producer of an indie film that was still in production stage. After the greetings, they immediately talked business. Miss Long, we would like to use your song, Phantom of Your Love, as our film's official theme song, the producer said. I was actually the one who wants to use your song, the director interjected. The first time I heard the full song, I knew that it's the perfect theme song for our film. Iris was silent for a few moments, thinking. Then she asked, may I know first what your film is about? Of course. The producer then looked at the director. The director nodded. Then he began describing the story in detail to Iris. 
Her eyes lit up in wonder as she listened. Her head tilted to the side, imagining the story the director was telling her. What was even more amazing was that it was based on a true story. After the director finished talking, they all looked at Iris. Expectation and nervousness were in their eyes. Finally, they received her answer. It would be my honor to grant your request, she told them. But I have one condition. Director, what is it? I want to read the full script first and then rearrange the song to perfectly match the story. The director and the producer hesitated. I'll sign an NDA if you need me to. Deal, the director immediately said. The next day, Iris received a sealed copy of the script from Tang Yi. They didn't require her to sign an NDA but just asked her to keep the script's existence a secret. She assured them that she would. After reading the script, she immediately began rearranging Phantom of Your Love, making it darker than it already was, more soulful to the point of eerie, and of course cinematic. She worked with her symphony orchestra to record the new version of the song. Less than a week later, she submitted the song to JJ. Within a few hours, JJ called her on the phone. He excitedly told her that the director and producer loved the song so much that they wanted her to compose the film score for the entire movie. This is a great opportunity for you as a musician, JJ told her. Think about it carefully, brat. Iris was moved by the story so she agreed without hesitation. JJ was pleased with her answer but he still had to warn her. They can't pay you a lot, you know. They don't have the budget. It's okay. After a quick negotiation, everyone met up again for the contract signing, officially welcoming Iris as part of the film production team. Additionally, it was decided that JJ's record label would release the soundtrack album of the film. Of course, since Iris would be the one composing the entire film score, all the rights were hers and it would count as another full album under her name. It was scheduled to be her third official album, you're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 158 Chaos Around the World Dragon Palace Homes No. 10 The last time the four brothers hung out together was when Jean Liwei took Iris to the farm villa for their first date. Each of them had their own different careers. It was not easy for them to match their schedules, especially for Jean Liwei who was the head of the number one company in the country and Wang Yingjie who was a surgeon from a busy hospital. Compared to the two of them, Lin Yihan and UMO had more regular schedules. Today, the four brothers gathered at Jean Liwei's enormous residence. They were at the indoor tennis courts. They alternated opponents until they all played against each other a few times. Finally, they decided to stop when they felt too tired to continue. They were all panting and drenched in sweat. Servants instantly appeared to give them water bottles and towels before withdrawing to give the brothers privacy. Wang Yingjie was very observant. He turned to Jin Liwei. Third brother, is it just me or are your servants more eager to serve than usual? There's also something that I noticed. I've seen no signs of your presence in your house. Perhaps you were just too busy working that you haven't stayed here for a while. N. I haven't been staying here. Shilan and I have been living together at her place. What? UMO exclaimed. Third bro, is that true? Since when? Why haven't you told us? And I'm so sad. I go to Xiao Xiu's place every week but she never told me. I had no idea. I moved in with Shilan after I returned from my Canadian business trip. UMO, so long ago and you never told us. Are we still your brothers? Jean Liwei gave his fourth brother a side eye, not bothering to reply. Seems like you're quite serious about your relationship with her, Lin Yihan commented with his usual gentle voice. N. I plan to marry her, Jean Liwei said with a nod. All three brothers stared at him with wide eyes. Yumo's expression was the most comical. His mouth opened and closed like a gasping fish out of water. 
His eyes looked like they were going to pop out of their sockets. UMO, why you, what? Lin Yihan had a thoughtful expression. Wang Yingjie just nodded, as if he already expected it. His eyes were on Jin Liwei's left wrist. He immediately knew what LX on his brother's bangle stood for even without asking. The four brothers headed to the showers. UMO pestered Jin Liwei on the way, asking him all sorts of questions about his relationship with Iris. Jin Liwei answered some of them, but mostly just ignored his fourth brother's nonsense. After showering, they entered the adjoining sauna buck naked with only a single towel each. It would have been better if fifth brother is with us, Lin Yihan sighed. Third brother, you met with fifth brother while you were in Toronto, right? How is he? Jin Liwei nodded. He's doing well. He looked healthy when I saw him. He also recovered his mobility. Wang Yingjie, that's a great relief. Paralysis can be a tricky condition to recover from. UMO, I wonder when fourth bro will come back. The brothers became quiet, thinking about their youngest brother. They thought that they were going to lose him when they first heard about the accident. Thank the heavens that he managed to hold on to his life. All of them were looking forward to the day that all five of them could gather together again. Lin Yihan cleared his throat. He wanted to dissolve the suddenly somber atmosphere, so he changed the subject. By the way, third brother. Is your company all right? There are a lot of companies all around the world that have been struck by the recent hacking which exposed shocking scandals to the public. I heard that Europe and North America are the ones affected the most. UMO, oh yeah, I heard about that. It's all over the news. The scandal sparked public outrage with millions of clients suing the companies. Company chief officers are either resigning or are being fired. Almost all of them are facing police investigations. My company is not affected at all, Jean Liwei replied. Then he paused, realizing something. Now that I think about it, the companies that are related to Gene Corporation aren't affected either. Perhaps that's why only very few have been hit in the country compared to abroad. Lin Yihan, that's great to hear. Wang Yingjie, it's not only businesses. Research facilities and even universities have been hit. The worst are the ones involving politicians. New reports are popping up every day. Nobody has noticed any patterns yet based on the ones affected so far. It seems that the hacker is hitting randomly. I wonder what his goal is. UMO, isn't it obvious? He wants justice. I, for one, approve of this hacker. Those who have been exposed need to pay for the crimes they committed. What's the name of the hacker again? I forgot. Draken, Jean Liwei answered. UMO, yeah. I think Draken is cool. I heard that he didn't make any money from this recent hacking. He just wants to expose the evildoers. Lin Yihan sighed and shook his head. Fourth brother, don't idolize that hacker. He's now a wanted criminal. Many authorities from all over the world are now hunting for him. He should have contacted the police and shared his findings with them instead of carelessly dumping everything to the public. The chaos he caused all around the world is no joke. Stock prices crashing, riots everywhere. There have even been unverified reports that people are being assassinated because of the exposed scandals. Wang Yingjie turned to Jin Liwei. What do you think about it, third brother? I agree with the analyst who said that the hacker doesn't care about justice, Jean Liwei replied while wiping the sweat off his body with a towel. That hacker is just looking for attention. It seems that he only surfaced about a year ago. He's doing all of these to make a name for himself. That's all. Lin Yihan, whatever his reason for hacking and causing all this chaos, I'm glad that he didn't touch Jean Corporation. Jean Liwei, N. Wang Yingjie nodded. UMO muttered, I still think that Draken is cool. You're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories.
Chapter 159 Cross Academy The delicate, traditional koto music playing in the background evoked an image of a relaxing stroll in a bamboo forest. Iris sat inside a private room at the best Japanese restaurant in the city, sipping a hot tea blend of gikuro and dried sakura blossoms. The ambience was a combination of modern and traditional aesthetics. Jiang Yingyu stood stone-faced by the door, while Iris waited at the plush leather seats amidst the traditional decor. The two of them were currently the only ones in the room. Moments later, there was a knock on the door. Jiang Yingyu opened it and three people entered. A server led two foreign people into the room. The foreign man was advanced in age but he still looked tall and imposing. His back was straight, not stooped at all unlike other men his age. He had a full head of white hair connected to his equally white beard and mustache. The wrinkles on his face didn't diminish the stern and sharp look in his eyes. Walking beside him was a middle-aged petite blonde woman who looked like she had a perpetual smile on her face. Iris stood up and gave them a welcoming smile. She glanced at Jiang Yingyu and nodded. Jiang Yingyu bowed her head before exiting the room. The blonde woman stepped forward and extended a hand to Iris. She spoke in German. Hello. My name is Julia Moretti. You must be Miss Shilon Long. We have spoken on the phone before. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. Hello, Madam Moretti. It's a pleasure to meet you too, Iris replied in fluent German. Then they turned to the older man. Julia Moretti introduced him. This is Professor Erwin Dupont, Headmaster of Cross Academy. Professor Dupont, it is my great honor to meet you, sir, Iris respectfully greeted the headmaster. Thank you very much for taking the time to fly here all the way from Switzerland to meet me despite your busy schedule. Professor Dupont nodded and shook hands with Iris. I've been looking forward to meeting you, Miss Long. They seated themselves. The server poured tea to the two new arrivals and then took their orders. The food arrived a few minutes later. They chatted good-naturedly about each other's countries while eating. Though it was mostly the women doing most of the talking. After eating, they finally talked about the purpose of this meeting. Miss Long, the headmaster and I, with my capacity as the admissions counselor, have come here today to officially invite you to become a student of Cross Academy. Julia Moretti handed Iris a thick envelope. Thank you. Iris received it with a smile and opened it, reading the official offer from the Academy, an enrollment form, and other documents. Julia Moretti, as you may already know, Cross Academy is an exclusive, one-of-a-kind institution. Nothing like it exists anywhere else in the entire world. Following the original purpose of our great founder 250 years ago, we continue to gather only the most talented and skilled individuals in various fields across the world. Successful enrollment is only available through direct offer from us and never by application. Miss Long, do you know why we extended an offer to you? Yes, Iris answered. Professor Dupont finally spoke. Your recent hacking exploits have left a trail of chaos all over the world. As an individual, I say your actions were utterly irresponsible and cruel. However, as the headmaster of Cross Academy, I dare say that your superior skills undoubtedly make you deserving to become a student of our academy. We only care about skills, not motivation or reputation. We nurture but it's up to the individual to grow. Iris bowed her head, acknowledging his words. Professor Dupont, you say that you know the reason why we extended an offer to you. Pray tell. Iris, because my style and skills in hacking remind you of someone. Correct. Then his eyes became sharper as he directed them at her. Draken, what is your connection to Phantom? She took two deep breaths before answering. Phantom, taught me everything I need to know about hacking and computers. You can say that Phantom is my master. Professor Dupont looked like he already expected her answer. Since that's the case, do you know Phantom's real identity? Her eyes darkened. Yes. They waited for her to say more. 
it took almost a full minute before she finally answered. Phantom is, was Evelina Vitrova, a Cross Academy alumni, she whispered in a flat tone. And she's dead. Everyone was quiet after that. Nobody said a word. The atmosphere became heavy, almost suffocating. Professor Dupont sighed heavily. Indeed. What a sad life she lived. She was one of the brightest talents that I have known. Our Cross Academy will always be proud of her. Iris' hands clenched into fists. They trembled a bit, before she forced them to relax. The he looked at her again. But her amazing skills live through you. That's why we're here today. Tell me, Miss Long. Did you create that ruckus all over the world just to get our attention? Yes, sir. I want education but I have no interest in wasting my time at a regular school. He nodded. Indeed, your past school records are horrendous. Fortunately, Cross Academy doesn't judge base on that. Specialized talent and skills aren't necessarily reflected on school report cards. Miss Long, you are indeed a disciple of the late Miss Vitrova. Not only did you inherit her world-class skills as a hacker, but you're also skilled in languages. As you requested, we will not enroll you to our computer science program like her but in the foreign languages program instead with minor focus on business administration. After all, with Phantom as your master, we can't really teach you anything new as a hacker since she herself had a huge influence to the development of our current computer science program when she was still a student and later on as an alumni. Then he gestured to the blonde woman sitting beside him, silently instructing her to take over. Julia Moretti nodded and then smiled at Iris. Miss Long, would you be willing to accept our offer to become a student of Cross Academy? Of course, Iris answered. It will be my honor. Julia Moretti, excellent. Please complete the form I gave you and provide the necessary documents. The headmaster and I will be staying in this country for a week to process your official enrollment. If you have any questions or issues, please feel free to give me a call and I'll do my best to assist you. Thank you very much, Professor Dupont and Madame Moretti. The headmaster's stern and sharp eyes softened a bit, showing a pleased glint within them. Miss Shilan Long, as the headmaster, I welcome you to Cross Academy. You're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 160 Legendary School for Geniuses On the way home inside the car, Iris studied the documents Julia Moretti gave her. She planned on completing all the necessary requirements for enrollment today and submit everything to the admissions counselor tomorrow. After reading through them, she leaned back and closed her eyes. She was at the back seat. Jiang Yingyu was sitting at the front with the driver. They left Dom at the penthouse. He was busy with paperwork regarding her recent job commitments. Iris' feelings at the moment about her enrollment to Cross Academy were complicated. Cross Academy was viewed by most of the world as a legendary school for geniuses. It was situated at a remote location in the Swiss Alps. Not much was known about its history other than what they revealed to the public. Nevertheless, most textbooks agreed that the Academy was founded by a mysterious explorer and educator named Professor Galaxian Arya von Cross about 250 years ago. The first students she recruited to establish the Cross Academy when they settled in the Swiss Alps all became key historical figures with great accomplishments after they returned to their own homelands. She passed down the Academy to one of her students and disappeared thereafter, never to be seen or heard from again. The Academy continued to follow the mission laid down by its great founder, to gather and nurture the most talented and skilled individuals in the world. However, Throughout its two and a half centuries of existence, it also evolved to become an independent, neutral superpower with assets and networks comparable to a wealthy country. After all, most of its alumni were world-class leaders in their own fields of expertise. What made it unique was that once enrolled, its students didn't need to travel all the way to Switzerland to study. Instead, the academy would send highly skilled instructors to wherever part of the world its students lived. 
Despite this option, most students still chose to study directly at the campus in Switzerland. In her previous life as Evelina, she was recruited by the academy in her early teens after playing around in the deep web. Bored and curious, she accepted the offer without thinking too much. She only thought that it would be interesting. What she didn't expect was the delighted reactions from her family after they learned that Cross Academy made an offer to her. They were absolutely ecstatic. Even her cold mother had a rare pleased expression on her face. It was only afterwards that she realized how prestigious a standing Cross Academy held on the world stage. Since her background was special and her family rarely permitted her to leave the estate, the academy sent instructors to her. She officially enrolled as a computer science student. But seeing her talent in music, the academy decided to nurture her in this field as well, replacing her private music teacher with some of the top musicians in the world who were also alumni of the academy. That was how her skills in both computers and music were developed to such a high degree. The number of times she actually visited the Swiss campus could be counted in one hand. And each time, her entourage was like a small army. Now as Iris Long, she never really thought about getting a regular university degree because she already received the best education in the world in her previous life. That was until Long Hui pointed out that she was undereducated and unqualified to work at Long Industries. She realized that to others, she barely completed senior high school. It was unfortunate that no matter how intelligent or skilled a person was, he or she would still be looked down upon by most of society if he or she lacked a university degree or an equivalent proof of higher education or training. Unless a person developed a massively successful career or was earning millions or better yet billions of money, others would have preconceived notions that the undereducated were automatic failures in life. Iris personally didn't give a whit about what others thought about her. She just wanted to live her life the way she wanted it, enjoying her passions, discovering new things, and most importantly pursuing her dreams. However, she was slowly realizing that she was now living in society, not in a closed-off environment anymore. She still didn't care about others' unwanted opinions, but Long Huey's words stuck with her. She had the education but no proof. Of course, she could always enroll at a regular university and easily pass everything, but she didn't want to take time off from her showbiz career to spend years studying. So she decided that her best option was Cross Academy. Now that she was about to become a student in the academy once again, Iris couldn't help but feel uncomfortable using her connection to her previous life. She was both Evelina and Iris, but they were two different people. She wanted a fresh start as Iris Long, but it seemed that she still needed Evelina Vitrova. This was making her a little nervous. It felt like she just opened a door which she couldn't close, the door separating her past and present lives. Iris shook her head, not liking the direction of her thoughts. Yingyu, could you please put on some music? Jiang Yingyu turned on the radio. Jean Chonglin's song was currently playing. She was about to change to another station but Iris stopped her. No, that's fine. Thank you. Iris leaned back and focused on the sexy R&B song to distract herself. Her fingers tapped with the beat of the music. For some reason, the song was making her think of Jean Liwei. Taking out her phone, she started typing. I think I miss you. Then she hesitated, contemplating whether to send the text or not. He's my boyfriend. There's nothing wrong in texting him to say that I miss him. Persuading herself like this, she finally sent the text. Ding. Barely three seconds had passed and he already replied. Liwei, I miss you too, baby. So much. We'll come home early tonight in time for dinner. I love you. She was already smiling before she even realized it. And just like that, all her earlier worries were blown away by a single text from her man, you're tuning in to the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 161 I'll Go With You Gold Heights Condominium Later that night, Iris was at the library office reviewing some language textbooks. 
she figured that she should at least refresh her knowledge before she started her formal education as a Cross Academy student. She was reclining on the chaise long surrounded by several books when Jean Leeway came to see what she was up to. After dinner, they went to their bedroom. She washed up first because he needed to take an important call. When it was his turn at the bathroom, he thought that she was waiting on their bed but when he was done, she was nowhere in sight. He went out of the room and started looking for her. One of the maids told him that his baby girl headed to the library office. Seeing her so serious, he stood back. He wanted to admire her a bit first. As usual, whenever she was too engrossed in something, she would lose awareness of her surroundings. She hadn't noticed him yet. Finally, he couldn't hold it any longer. He wanted to touch her now, so he walked the distance between them in just a few long strides. Despite the sound of his footsteps, she still failed to notice him. A bit displeased, he sat down beside her and pulled her in his arms, nuzzling her neck. What, annoyed at being abruptly disturbed, she frowned and was about to rebuke him but his lips on her neck deliciously tickled her. She shivered a bit before stretching her neck to give him better access. He inhaled her sweet scent, and then gave a long lick from her collarbone, up her neck, to her earlobe. He started feeling the familiar desire building within his lower abdomen. What are you doing, he whispered to her ear. She lightly ran her fingers through his hair. Studying. For what? Emmen, I'm enrolling in a school. He was a little surprised. He straightened and looked at her. That's great. Congratulations, baby. Thank you. She smiled at him. What are you studying, he asked, although he already had an idea seeing the kind of books currently scattered around her. Foreign languages. That's good. He nodded, smiling, and then kissed her forehead. So which school are you going to? Hmm, a Swiss school. His smile froze. What? You know, a school in Switzerland. A sense of panic suddenly rushed over him. He took a few deep breaths, trying to calm himself but the expression on his face was already beginning to turn ugly. Baby, have you thought about this carefully? Yes. She sensed the change in his emotions. She tilted her head to the side, wondering why. Have you enrolled already? The process will probably be completed tomorrow. I already met with the academy's headmaster and the admissions counselor earlier today. They specifically flew all the way from Switzerland just to meet me. There should be no problems in my enrollment. He was dismayed that she planned and did all of these things without his knowledge. He took several more deep breaths to try controlling his now increasingly turbulent emotions. So you're going to Switzerland? Hmm. She blinked, a bit confused. She was about to say no but he spoke before she could. That's very far, baby. Then she finally understood. Oh. So that's why he's acting so weirdly. He doesn't want me to leave him. Annoying. But why am I thinking he's, cute? She was now getting a little better in understanding him. Feeling a little mischievous, she put on a solemn expression. What would you do if I go to Switzerland? He was now really panicking. He couldn't help it. He tried fixing his expression but to no avail. I'll go with you, he suddenly declared. Where's your school? I'll buy us a house near it. Wait, don't tell me you're going to stay at the dorms. She fought against the big smile threatening to break out of her expression. How come she was only just noticing how cute he was? Hmm. What if I am, she asked. I'll start looking for a house now. I'll have it ready before you start school. Don't stay at the dorms. They're smelly, dirty, and noisy. Plus you have to share the space with other people who I'm sure will be annoying. It's better to have our own place there. Okay, baby. Hmm. Give me your school information. We'll have a house by the end of the week. She rubbed her hands on his chest, enjoying the hard muscles against her palms. 
You'll really go with me to Switzerland? Of course. What if I want to go alone? Baby, please. And what about Gene Corporation? Are you just going to leave it? A determined look appeared on his face. Don't worry about it. I'll make it work. I'm going with you, he insisted. She couldn't hold it in anymore. She threw her head back and laughed out loud. Oh Liwei. She moved and sat on his lap, wrapping her arms around his neck. She looked at his confused expression, giggling. Don't worry. I'm not going to Switzerland. At least, not any time soon, she told him. But it's true that I'm enrolling in a Swiss school. Wait. I don't understand. It's kind of a, hmm, weird school, I guess. They'll send instructors to me instead so I won't need to personally be in Switzerland. He was only getting more confused. Like homeschooling? She thought for a moment. Something like that. Can you tell me what school it is? Smiling mischievously, she shook her head. It's a surprise. Please, baby. She thought for a moment, but then shook her head again. I'll tell you but not right now. Like I said, it's a surprise. He could only sigh. He really wanted to know what school it was so that he could research everything about it. But he was feeling more relieved at the moment to know that she wouldn't be leaving him after all to go study in another country. Okay, baby. He finally started smiling again. I understand. MMN, she laid her head on his shoulder and then murmured, let's go to bed. N. He wrapped his arms around her body and stood up. He carried his precious baby girl to their bedroom. As they slept, he subconsciously embraced her tightly, not wanting to let her go, you're tuning in to the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 162 That Mannerism Toronto, Canada The city's night lights were reflected on the Great Lake, shimmering under the not-so-dark sky. The city lights were so bright that only a handful of stars could be seen in the sky. Although the view was not breathtaking, it was still beautiful and some may even call it romantic. Inside his penthouse unit, Lu Ziheo didn't even notice the view. He was so used to seeing it every day that it no longer moved him. Even though he paid a fortune for this very view when he purchased his condo unit. He was reclining on his king-sized bed, preoccupied with his laptop computer on a lap desk. His usual laid-back countenance was nowhere to be seen. It was replaced by an intense, almost demonic expression which made his already roguish looks even more alluring. His handsomeness no longer expressed a carefree attitude but an aura of danger instead. All of his attention was on the screen of his laptop. He was watching a recording of Iris Long's recent live performance at a morning TV show. She sung one of her hit songs, Phantom of Your Love. When the video finished, he clicked on the next one which was another performance by her. For the past few weeks, he had been poring over any available information about Iris Long. His curiosity about her was first piqued when Jean Leeway visited him in Toronto. Jean Leeway mentioned that Lu Ziheo reminded him of his girlfriend when they first met each other. During that time, he only felt a mild curiosity. True, there was an unmistakable tug to his instincts when he first heard about the girl, but he didn't really think too much about it. He had no interest in someone else's woman. It was only when UMO began sending him links to videos of the girl that Lu Ziheo felt something more than just passing interest. Among the brothers, UMO was the one he regularly communicated with. Even when he didn't reply, the guy would frequently send him emails, texts, and voicemails. He didn't really mind because UMO was a fun guy. UMO often talked about Jean Liwei's girlfriend who he proudly referred to as his beloved student. At first, he just listened to the guy's chatter. It somewhat helped relieve his boredom, especially since everyone was so d asterisk mn cautious around him, afraid that he would injure himself and become paralyzed again. How annoying. Then a few weeks ago, UMO sent him a link to a music video. 
It was of the song, Rebirth, by Iris Long when her album just released. He was instantly riveted, not only by the song itself but by the woman singing it. His heart started pounding. He watched the music video again and again, and then started searching for her other music videos. He found that her older music videos when she was still a teenager didn't elicit the same reaction from him. In fact, he thought that her earlier songs were pure trash. As he started searching for more information about her, he discovered that she disappeared from the limelight for two years and then made a comeback just recently. He directly called UMO to ask about her. I really don't know much, UMO told him. You should ask third bro, Xiao Xiao is his girlfriend after all. Lu Ziheo thanked UMO, but personally didn't think his suggestion was a good idea. He saw how possessive Jean Liwei was towards his girlfriend when they briefly talked about her during his visit. He didn't fear the man, but it was better not to create any tension in their relationship as brothers. He had a strong feeling that if he started asking Jean Liwei about his girlfriend, the man would grow suspicious and question him about his motives. So he took matters on his own hands and started searching on his own. There wasn't much information but from what he gathered, Iris Long became comatose after a car accident. She had a very bad reputation before but had a drastic change in personality after her recent comeback. Many attributed it to a strategic image change from a bratty teen pop singer to a more mature adult musician. This logic made sense, but there was something about it that bothered him. He just couldn't put his finger on it. That was why he bought a digital copy of the entire Rebirth album and watched all of Iris Long's music videos over and over again. Then he started watching her live performances that were uploaded online. The voice was different, but that singing. It felt familiar. And whenever she played the piano, her movements. All felt too familiar. He started trembling, feeling excited and emotional, yet not daring to believe. What if? At the moment, he was now watching Iris Long's interviews. They were the interviews she did with the social media influencers because they were the ones readily available on the web. Lu Ziheo's focus was entirely on her. The way she talked, her expressions and movements. His heart rate was jumping all over the place. He felt sweaty and he was breathing quickly, almost panting. The last straw for him was when she tilted her head to the side as she mulled over a question. That mannerism. With a shaking hand, he scrolled back on the video to replay that part again. Iris tilted her head to the side, a thoughtful expression on her face. This. He removed the lap desk over him and tumbled off the bed. He started pacing around his room, trying to calm himself down but to no avail. He would return to his laptop to replay that scene again. Then he would pace again, rubbing his face with his hands. Is it possible? Returning to the bed, he paused the video showing her head tilt. His chest heaved with intense emotions. Is it really you? Then a determined expression appeared on his face. I need to meet her, he mumbled. He grabbed his phone from the bedside table. His trembling hands felt clumsy. He cursed a few times before he was able to dial correctly. Impatient, he continued pacing until the other person picked up his call. Hello, doctor. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 163 Beloved Grandpa and Unfilial Grandson The annoying sound of the ringing phone awakened Lu Ziheo from a restless sleep. Annoyed, he covered his ear with a pillow and buried himself deeper under the thick duvet. He desperately tried returning to sleep. However, the blasted phone kept on ringing. Finally, it stopped and the call went to voicemail. Hello. Hello. Are you there, my boy? Are you awake yet? Wake up. It's already morning there in Toronto. Why don't you answer the D asterisk MN phone? Your beloved grandpa is calling you yet you're ignoring me. You unfilial grandson. I'll let you know that when your parents were too busy when you were still a baby, 
I fed you milk and changed your diapers. I took care of you even when you frequently vomited all over me. You were so cute back then, but now you're. Beep. One second. Two seconds. Ring. 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 Lu Ziheo pressed the pillow harder over his ear, determined to ignore the ringing phone. He spent the entire night watching all the available videos of Iris Long on the web. He had only slept for a couple of hours. He felt exhausted. The call went to voicemail again. This bloody machine dare cut me off. Answer the phone right now. What are you doing? Are you still sleeping? Don't you know that sleeping too much is bad for your health? Men your age should be up and about being active and looking for a nice lady to marry. When I was your age, I was already raising your father. You're not getting any younger, boy. When are you going to give me great grandbabies? I can never rest in eternal peace knowing that you still haven't done your duty to continue our bloodline. You should. Beep. The phone started ringing again. Lu Ziheo groaned. He was now fully awake. Tossing the pillow, he squinted against the bright sunlight peeking through the curtains. He yawned but still didn't move to answer the phone. My dear boy. Are you alright? Why aren't you answering the phone? Did you break your neck again? I knew it. I shouldn't have listened to you, you hard-headed dunderhead. I shouldn't have allowed you to live there alone. Don't worry, my boy. Your beloved grandpa will send someone to break open your door and save you. Sighing in exasperation, Lu Ziheo reached over and grabbed the phone from the bedside table. Hello, grandfather. His voice sounded groggy. There's my boy. Did you just wake up? It's already so late. Why are you only waking up now? He glanced at the digital clock on the bedside table. Yawning again, he replied, Grandfather, it's not even 7 a.m. yet. Seven is late. A man's day begins at five in the morning. And call me Grandpa. Do you think that just because you've grown up, you're now an adult? Ha! You'll always be a little boy in your grandpa's eyes. Distaste appeared on Lu Ziheo's face. He looked ready to murder someone, but was able to control himself. Forcing a pleasant expression and tone of voice, he spoke to the old man. All right, grandpa. Is something the matter? Why are you calling me? Humph. Do I need a reason every time I want to call my favorite grandson? He rubbed his temples. He felt a throbbing headache. Probably from the lack of sleep. The old man was still yapping, so he decided to change the subject. How's Greece, Grandpa? Beautiful, as usual. I'm thinking of selling this island of mine. I've had it for years now. It's starting to feel boring. I was planning on buying another island to develop again, but then I received a call from a friend in Switzerland, so now I have to return to China. Lu Ziheo's eyes lit up. I want to return to China, too. Oh no, you don't. You're not finished with your rehabilitation yet. Did you forget that you were paralyzed? What are you going to do if you break your neck again? You haven't given me great grandbabies yet. Be a good boy and stay there for now. Sighing, he looked up at the ceiling, desperately trying to be patient with the old man. Grandpa, I already talked to my doctor last night. She said that if I clear my next tests this week, I'll be safe for long travels. Humph. Clear those tests first and then we'll talk. But for now, be a good boy and focus on getting well. Also make sure to ask your doctor if your sperm cells are okay. What if they were damaged in the accident? Then you won't be able to give me great grandbabies. He scowled. Grandpa, my sperm cells are fine. How do you know? Have you impregnated a nice lady yet? Of course not. Then you don't know if they're fine or not. Have them checked and tell me the results. Do you understand? No way. You unfilial grandson. You. 
Lu Ziheo quickly changed the subject. So why are you returning to China? Oh. The old man laughed mischievously. It's for a young lady. I haven't met her yet, but apparently she's a genius. Let me check her out first and then we'll see. Maybe she'll be a good match for you. If she is, I'll let you meet her. Then the two of you can give me great grandbabies together. You should be thankful. Your grandpa is doing all the work in finding a mate for you, you lazy boy. He rolled his eyes. No need, grandpa. I can find my own woman. Ha! If I allow you to find your own woman, I'll already be dead by that time. I can't wait that long. All you five brothers are the same. You're already in your thirties but you all haven't settled down yet. You unfilial boys. Hmm. Actually third brother already has a girlfriend and it seems like he plans to marry her. Thinking about Iris Long, Lu Ziheo's expression became serious. He felt an unwillingness within him when he thought about Jean Liwei marrying her. He pushed the feeling away. He still needed to ascertain things first. What? Is that true? So that boy is not gay after all. The old man's laughter boomed over the phone. Good, good. I'll make that boy show me his woman when I see him. You should follow your third brother's example. His headache was getting worse. He sighed. Fine, Grandpa. Well, my boy. If you really can't find your own woman, don't worry. Grandpa will check that genius girl and see if she'll be a good match for you. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 164 Hit the Jackpot Iris' enrollment to Cross Academy was processed immediately. She met one more time with Professor Erwin Dupont and Julia Moretti before they left the country to return to Switzerland. They told her that they would arrange for suitable instructors for her as soon as possible. And they were true to their word. By the following week, Iris welcomed her new instructors. There were two of them for now. Both were accomplished polyglots and Cross Academy alumni. She was told that there was one more coming who would mentor her on business matters. However, she had no idea who this mentor was or when he or she would be coming. The first instructor was Professor Kalisha Schwartz. The attractive half-German and half-Nigerian lady was a famous interpreter and translator with extensive experience working with the most notable figures in the world including multinational organizations and companies. Some of the most sought-after interpreters and translators in the world were trained by her. Her expertise lay in the major European and African languages. The other instructor was Professor Hisakawa Akio who was currently one of the most celebrated authors in his home country of Japan. He frequently translated his own books to other languages for international release. He was assigned to train Iris in Asian languages. Compared to European languages, Iris wasn't as proficient in other languages. Although this was the case, her proficiency level in these other languages were still leagues better than most regular people. However, as a Cross Academy student, this level was still not quite good enough. That was why she needed to study hard under the tutelage of her assigned instructors. Professor Schwartz flew all the way from England where she had been living for the past decade. Professor Hisakawa was nearer, flying from Japan. The academy arranged separate accommodations for them a few minutes drive away from Iris' condo building. Before officially starting her studies, Iris invited the two instructors for dinner at her penthouse. She made sure to inform Jean Liwei in advance so that he could clear his schedule. She wanted him to meet her instructors because they were going to become a big part of her daily life from now on. Iris and Jean Liwei welcomed the two instructors together at the penthouse. Jean Liwei's eyes widened as he recognized the older woman. Madame Schwartz, he blurted out even before the greetings. The female professor took a few seconds before recognizing him. Then she replied in English with a posh British accent, a bit different from Iris' accent. Oh, aren't you CEO Jean? 
What a surprise to see you here. Then she turned to Iris. Shilon, my dear, is he your lover? Iris nodded, a smile on her face. Yes, Professor. Oh my. Professor Schwartz turned to Jean Liwei again. What a lucky man you are. Seems like you hit the jackpot. Iris giggled and looked at her man's astonished expression. Of course Jean Liwei recognized Professor Schwartz. As the president CEO of Jean Corporation, the number one company in the country, he often met up with other business leaders from other countries. During these meetings, they would often need the assistance of an interpreter and Professor Schwartz was one of the best in the world. As a result, he met the professor a number of times in the past especially when he traveled to Europe for business meetings or conferences. While he was still making sense of the situation, Iris formally greeted her instructors. She spoke in English. Both the professors could speak Mandarin, but Professor Schwartz wasn't quite as skilled in Asian languages. Her Mandarin sounded awkward. Professor Schwartz, Hisako Asensei, thank you very much for accepting me as your student. Both of you must be busy, so I appreciate that you flew all the way here to guide my education. I am looking forward to learning from both of you. I'll do my best. Iris spoke these words with great respect and sincerity. Ah, don't worry about it, child, Professor Hisakawa said, waving his hand. I was getting bored anyway holed up in my house after finishing my recent novel, so I'm glad that Professor Dupont asked for me. I've never had a Chinese student before so I'm excited. I'm very strict, so you better be ready. Thank you, Sensei. I'll do my best. Jean Liwei didn't recognize Professor Hisakawa but he figured that he must be an important figure if he was with someone like Professor Schwartz. My dear, I've been looking forward to meeting you ever since I heard about you from Professor Dupont, Professor Schwartz said. He rarely asks for me, you know. Iris smiled. Afterwards, she formally introduced Jean Liwei and the two instructors to each other. For people who belonged to the one and only Cross Academy, they knew that they were the most elite among the elites in the world. Most of them wouldn't go around bragging to everyone that they were from Cross Academy, but in their hearts, they knew that they were special and that others were regular people. That was why, no matter how wealthy or powerful Jean Liwei was, he was still a regular person to people like Professor Schwartz and Professor Hisakawa or anyone else from Cross Academy. For people like them, they would never feel awed upon meeting Jean Liwei. In front of the two professors, Jean Liwei felt like a child or someone insignificant. They were nice and polite, but he could feel that they didn't think much of him. This was the first in a long time that he felt this way, ever since succeeding the leadership of Jean Corporation. Iris and Jean Liwei led their two guests to the living area for some tea while they waited for dinner. Jean Liwei sat back and listened to their conversation. He only spoke when directly asked. The puzzle pieces were falling into place in his mind. He now had an idea which school his baby girl enrolled to. Not many people were aware of it, but he knew that Professor Schwartz studied in that legendary Swiss school. He didn't really know Professor Hisakawa before this, but he suspected that he must also be affiliated with that school. Jean Liwei personally never had any direct dealings with the legendary school, but he still knew a lot about it compared to the general public because Jean Corporation itself had an unexpected connection to it. He wanted confirmation. Clearing his throat, he asked, Shilan, is the school you're enrolled in perhaps, Cross Academy? Iris smiled. Yes. Although he already suspected it, he still felt shocked when she confirmed it. He looked at the two instructors. Professor Schwartz chuckled seeing his reaction. Then she turned to Iris. My dear, don't tell me you didn't mention it to your lover. Iris nodded. I wanted to surprise him. Well, my dear. Looks like you succeeded. Just look at him. Jean Liwei was looking at his baby girl in amazed disbelief. He already knew that she was a genius, but he still never expected that she would reach such a level to be admitted to the Cross Academy. Intense pride surged through him. Before he even realized it, 
he was already pulling her into a tight embrace. You're the best, baby. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 165 Mysterious Supporter The following days were extremely busy for Iris. She officially began her education as a cross academy student. Despite this, she still continued working as usual. Iris was currently one of the hottest figures in showbiz with the continued success of her album, Rebirth, her upcoming album, Rebirth Melodies, and her appointment as official composer to a still unknown film. People were constantly talking about her. Suddenly, news came out about the Alarm Girls. A court hearing was finally scheduled for their case of assaulting Mr. Chen's secretary, in addition to the slew of other charges pressed against them by the Nail Polish Company. In addition to this, someone bailed them out of jail, even providing them with a lawyer. Even more surprising was that the lawyer was from a well-known law firm. It appeared that the girls managed to snag a powerful supporter. A conspiracy theory quickly became popular online. It said that the girl's mysterious supporter must be an Iris Long hater. With some digging, it was revealed that the lawyer's firm was fierce rivals with the law firm of Iris Long's lawyer. It should be remembered that Iris Long's lawyer also pressed charges against the alarm girls for the incident during her launch party. Plus her injured fans took a class action lawsuit against the three girls with another lawyer financed by Madame Foam Wan and her friends. However, the court hearing for these cases had no schedules yet. The theory also pointed out that ever since the alarm girls were bailed out, they always made sure to blame Iris Long for their predicament during interviews, even though the current case they were facing was the one against Mr. Chen's secretary and the nail polish company. With these observations, it really seemed like someone intended to taint Iris Long's name and reputation, especially now that her star was on the rise. Of course, Iris heard about all of these. Her assistant was a big chatterbox after all. Boss, look at this. Don showed her the news on his phone. Which stupid a asterisk asterisk hole gave those three b asterisk cheese a d asterisk mn lawyer. And they're still spouting bullsh asterisk t about you. Such evil. They're not humans. They're scum. Iris was doing a translation exercise on her laptop. It was an assignment given by Professor Hisakawa. She just finished the one Professor Schwartz gave her. She only gave a cursory glance at the phone before ignoring it, focusing once again on her assignment. Boss. They're too much. They're clearly up to no good. I'm so upset. Iris sighed, a bit annoyed of being disturbed. Dom, don't waste your time and energy on them. It's not our turn yet to fight against them. They still need to face the nail polish company first. They're just trying to provoke us. We have more important things to do at the moment than react to their petty jabs. Let's focus on our work, okay? Dom pouted and grumbled before reluctantly nodding. Okay, boss. It's just that I have a bad feeling about this, especially about that B asterisk starred who's supporting them behind the scenes. I wonder who it is. Should we investigate? If Iris wasn't so busy, she would have already investigated it. But at the moment, she just had no time to spare on the alarm girls and whoever was supporting them. She was now moving forward with her life. To her, the alarm girls were just brief stumbling blocks on the road. Why look back and start concerning herself again with insignificant roadblocks when she was already running forward? Her current priorities didn't include the three stupid girls. She would let her lawyer handle the matter with them. Only if he couldn't deal with them by himself would she step forward. But if he really failed, then she would have to start looking for a more competent lawyer next time. These days, her break times weren't for resting but for studying. All her free time consisted of studying resource materials, completing assignments, or video calling her instructors for e-lessons. Then after work, depending on who was scheduled to teach for the day, either Professor Schwartz or Professor Hisakawa would be waiting for her at the penthouse when she arrived home. 
she would quickly wash up and then start their personal lessons. The lessons usually lasted until very late into the night. Iris would be so exhausted afterwards. Jean Leeway would pick her up at the library office and carry her to their bedroom. She would already be sleeping by the time he laid her on their bed. He would remove her clothes and put on her pajamas for her before joining her on the bed to sleep. One night after her lessons, she managed to stay awake when Jean Leeway picked her up at the library office. Seeing her exhaustion, he was becoming increasingly worried about her health. He felt very proud of her achievements and would always support her, but if she continued to work and study in this grueling pace, she might collapse again. He didn't want a repeat of that terrifying night when she fell unconscious in front of him. Baby, what if you temporarily stop working? You can always make another comeback once you finish your studies, he suggested. No, she immediately replied. But baby. Leeway, I love my work and I'm also enjoying my studies. Yes, it's tiring to do both at the same time but, I feel so alive right now. He opened his mouth to reason with her but seeing her earnest look, he swallowed the words he was about to say. Sighing, he tucked a lock of hair behind her ear. I just want you to be healthy. I know. She smiled and hugged his waist while looking up at him. Thank you. He looked at her, his face serious. If you get sick, you'll drop everything and focus on resting. Okay, baby. She frowned. He lifted her chin with his fingers. Promise me, baby. Fine, she mumbled with great reluctance. He smiled and quickly kissed her lips, before carrying her to bed, you're tuning in to the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 166 Rebirth Melodies The hype surrounding the upcoming release of Iris Long's new album, Rebirth Melodies, was due to several factors. First was that it was the piano version of the already successful, Rebirth, album. Second was that it would be accompanied by a complete piano songbook which was of great interest not only to pianists but also to other instrumental musicians as well. Even to those who weren't musicians but were Iris Long fans, especially the Black Stars, the songbook was a great collectible. Third was that it was an album intended to be released internationally right from the start. Fourth and the biggest factor of all was that the album was first announced alongside the bombshell about Iris Long being appointed as official composer for an as-of-yet unknown film. These were the reasons why it broke pre-order records for instrumental albums in the country's music history. Despite the hype and the record-breaking pre-order sales, many music industry experts still predicted that Rebirth Melodies wouldn't be able to directly compete against the usual pop albums because it was an instrumental album. They reasoned that the majority of people weren't that interested in purely instrumental music. In the past, the only instrumental albums that could directly compete in the music charts were the official soundtracks of popular TV drama and movies. Even albums by the country's most celebrated classic instrumental musicians rarely entered the music charts. Rebirth Melodies wasn't any of these, not an official soundtrack of a popular TV drama or film and Iris Long wasn't a celebrated classic instrumental musician either. So the music industry expert skepticism about the album made sense. Finally, the release day of Iris Long's album, Rebirth Melodies, arrived. Following the music industry expert skepticism, many radio stations declined to play the album's piano songs. Only a handful readily played them, including DJ Song's radio show. Despite not getting sufficient radio airplay, Rebirth Melodies still managed to debut at number 8 in the music charts. It accomplished this feat based purely on streaming power and sales. It was currently the only instrumental album in the music charts top 100. Its daily streaming power was on its way to catching up to the original Rebirth album. People liked to listen to Rebirth and Rebirth Melodies simultaneously to compare. The two albums technically contained the same songs, but listeners were quickly discovering that Rebirth Melodies had a completely different vibe from the original album. 
Iris Long didn't just transcribe the original songs as they were but rearranged them to evoke purer and rawer emotions from the listeners. In the original Rebirth album, the presence of Iris Long herself and her amazing vocals added a big entertainment element to the listening experience. Her skillful and emotional singing was the album's most important quality. In Rebirth Melodies, however, this element was not present. There were no vocals, so the listeners were left only with their pure emotions evoked directly by the piano music. As for the piano songbook, people had the option of buying it separately or with the album, no matter if the album was a physical or a digital copy. Since the songbook was published in book format, it was listed as such and was also available in all major bookstores. It quickly became a bestseller, breaking records for the fastest selling sheet music in the country. The industry experts were stunned. Then some classic instrumental musicians expressed their displeasure with how rebirth melodies continued to break records. One of the most accomplished classical pianists in the country who was treated as a national pride for decades was recorded saying, I'm utterly disappointed that instead of learning to appreciate proper classical music, our younger generation today are choosing to listen to some pop singer's simplistic piano transcription. This is further proof of the degradation in the education of our youth today. They don't know how to discern real art from sham. I feel insulted not only for myself but for all the real pianists in the world that a mere pop singer is pretending to be one of us. This comment by such a famous pianist caused headlines. The Black Stars were, of course, enraged. And since the pianist also criticized young people, even those who weren't Iris Long fans felt offended by his comment. What a snob. I hate people like him the most who think that they're better than the rest of us just because we don't know how to appreciate proper classical music. Proper, my a asterisk asterisk. Boring is more like it. He's just jealous because despite winning many awards, his albums never sold well. Why? because he's just playing the same classical music over and over. Even his own compositions sound like the ones composed by Beethoven, Mozart and the other greats. No originality at all. He just plays the piano really well. At least, Iris Long creates her own music and plays well. Your time is up, old man. Stay in the past where you belong. This is the era of our generation. And if we choose to like Iris Long, we'll like her. Backward people like you don't have any right to tell us what to do. The pianist didn't expect such a backlash from his comment. He felt upset and humiliated. As a result, his fellow classical musicians quickly banded together to defend him. Although Iris Long personally didn't say or do anything against them, these classical musicians still blamed her for disrespecting one of the most respected pianists in the country. They demanded an apology from her, you're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 167 Good News and Bad News Gene Corporation the company settled in its usual workday pace now that its recent big business project was running smoothly without needing constant attention from the president CEO. Jean Liwei sat behind his massive Dalbergia desk while his assistant stood a few steps away from him. Su Tian just finished relaying the most relevant daily business news. Afterwards, Su Tian cleared his throat and began his next daily task which was relaying public news about his future lady boss. President, I have several news concerning Miss Long. Which would you like to hear first? The good news or the bad news? Jean Liwei frowned. There's bad news. Yes, President. Unfortunately. Good news first. Su Tian nodded and then looked at his notes as he spoke. Miss Long's album Rebirth is still reigning at the top of the music charts. Today, all the top three positions in the singles ranking are taken by Rebirth, Phantom of Your Love, and Black Star. Second Master's song is in fourth place. It has been struggling to place third for more than a week now. It's even in danger of falling down further because the song behind it is the theme song for a very popular TV drama right now. Hmm excellent. 
Good. Continue. Su Tian blinked a couple of times. He immediately interpreted the president's brief comments. Excellent was obviously for Miss Long's achievements in the music charts. How about the good then? Did the president mean that it was good that his younger brother's song was falling down the ranks in the music charts? Su Tian suddenly felt a little sorry for the second master. But he didn't have time to think about the matter because he still had more news to relay. Miss Long's new album Rebirth Melodies is doing extremely well. Both the album and its accompanying piano songbook are already breaking records in the country. In the international market, it is being well received in Singapore, South Korea and Japan in Asia, the U.S. and Canada in North America, many countries in Europe especially in Austria, Germany and the U.K., and also in Australia. In Austria and Germany, it has even debuted within the top 10 of the music charts. Number 7 in Austria and number 10 in Germany. A pleased smile appeared on Jean Liwei's face. JJ's record label did an outstanding job in promoting Miss Long's album overseas, especially since Miss Long is more or less completely unknown outside the country. She's being labeled as an up-and-coming original music composer. There aren't a lot of reviews yet but most of the early ones gave positive reviews. It seems that critics are having a difficult time properly categorizing the album's musical style because although the music employs classical piano techniques, it doesn't completely rely on classical interpretation. Whatever that means, Su Tian thought as he read from his notes. He continued, some foreign music analysts are labeling rebirth melodies as contemporary classical but others are disagreeing. It seems that there is a debate going on about how to categorize Miss Long's album. Hmm. A debate can be good. Keeps up the interest, Jean Liwei murmured. Then Su Tian hesitated. At the moment, the president looked very pleased. Su Tian was certain that the next news he was about to relay would wipe his boss' pleasant expression. Sighing inside, he steeled himself. President, would you like to hear the bad news now? As expected, he didn't even say anything yet but his boss already looked displeased. Go, Jin Liwei ordered, his voice cold. Clearing his throat, Su Tian flipped to his next notes. Miss Long is currently under fire from some of classical musicians led by Maestro Lu Wei. He explained what happened to his boss. Jin Liwei was enraged. I often attend Maestro Lu Wei's performances and even invite him as an honorable guest for social events that I host. I respected him but I didn't know that he can be this spiteful just because he's jealous of my Shilan success. Preposterous. Then he ordered, give me a list of the other bastards who are bullying my Shilan. Here they are, President. Su Tian was ready and immediately handed him a printed sheet of paper with a list of names. Jean Liwei glanced at the names. Number one on the list was Maestro Lu Wei followed by sixteen other names. He only recognized two names besides the maestros. Make it hard for them to book concert locations in the country, he ordered. Also dig dirt about him and these other people. Jean Liwei's influence might be insignificant within the classical music industry, but his Jean Corporation was the number one company in the country. It pervaded many industries including much of the property sector. There were many places used as venues for classical music concerts that belonged to his company. He might not be able to completely prevent the maestro and his lackeys from booking other places in the country, but at the very least, they wouldn't be able to book most of the major venues because they belonged to Jean Corporation. This was the price for antagonizing the future madam of Jean Corporation. How dare they bully his baby girl! His respect and admiration for the maestro was now completely gone. Understood, Su Tian replied. And also. There's more. Jin Liwei's expression was now completely ugly. Unfortunately, yes. Jin Liwei leaned back and closed his eyes, trying to calm his anger. He waved his hand, gesturing for his assistant to continue. The investigation results you ordered to find the identity of the alarm girl's new backer has arrived. Oh. 
Jean Liwei opened his eyes, a dangerous glint in them. Who is it? Su Tian hesitated before handing him a file folder. Jean Liwei opened the folder and began reading. Shock and then fury appeared one after the other on his face. Then he threw the folder hard on his desk. It slid on the surface before falling to the floor. B asterisk TCH. Su Tian waited for a couple of seconds before cautiously retrieving the folder, tucking it between the other folders in his arms. Jin Liwei's hands clenched tightly into fists, slamming one onto his desk. His eyes burned with cold fury. This has to stop, he said through gritted teeth. My Jean family has to completely cut ties with this kind of insane people. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 168 True King of the Business World After Su Tian left the office to return to his own desk outside, Jean Liwei stood up and walked to the glass wall overlooking the bustling business district. His eyes were trained on the concrete buildings and giant flashy logos of various companies, but he wasn't seeing any of them. His mind was elsewhere. His expression remained cold as usual, but his eyes showed the turmoil within him. He continued standing without moving until the sound of a ringing phone interrupted him. Quickly reorienting himself, he walked to his desk and pressed a button, picking up the call on speakerphone. President, you have a call from Sir Lu Jianhong. It was Su Tian and he sounded excited. A trace of surprise flashed in Jin Liwei's eyes. Then his lips curved into a fond smile. I'll take it, he told his assistant. The call was transferred. Hello. Hello. Hey, Mr. Secretary. Did you really transfer me? How long do I have to wait to speak to that boy? I want to know. An elderly man's voice boomed over the speakerphone. Jean Liwei's smile became deeper upon hearing the familiar voice. Grandfather Lu, it's me. There you are, Liwei my boy. How are you? And quit with the grandfather. I already told you long ago to call me grandpa. You're just like that pinhead grandson of mine. All you brothers are the same. Inwardly chuckling, Jean Liwei maintained a calm voice as he talked to the elderly man. Grandpa Lu, to what do I owe this honor of receiving a call from you? Oh, right. I'm calling to let you know that I'm returning to China in a few days, I think. Hi. I was supposed to return weeks ago but my friends here in Greece wanted to throw me farewell parties. I have lots of friends, you know, and each of them hosted a party for me. What can I do? I can't just reject their kindness. So my friends and I partied every day. And before I knew it, weeks have already passed. Ah! That bossy DuPont bastard keeps on badgering and rushing me every single day to return to China immediately. Can't a man enjoy himself with his friends? Bah! What a killjoy! Though I'm not surprised given that he holds himself up in that fortress deep within the mountains every day. Jin Liwei quietly listened to Grandpa Lu's lively complaints. He didn't know who this DuPont bastard was but he figured he must be an impressive figure if he was able to badger and rush someone like Lu Jianhong. Most people consider Jin Liwei as the current most powerful man in the country's business world. However, this was only the case if Lu Jianhong was not in the country. Now that Lu Jianhong planned to return, the country's business world needed to welcome their true king. By the way, Li Wei my boy. I heard from Hao Hao that you now have a girlfriend. And that you're even planning to marry her. Yes, Grandpa Lu. That is true. Jin Li Wei's expression became gentler as he thought of his baby girl. The elderly man's booming laughter echoed throughout the spacious office. Good. That's good, boy. To be honest, your grandmother and I were deeply worried about you. Both your grandfather and father, bless their souls, are no longer with us, so your grandmother is always fretting that her beloved husband's business genes won't be able to continue after you. Business genes? 
Jean Liwei fought hard not to laugh out loud. You surely inherited your grandfather's head for business. You're even better than your father in leading Jean Corporation. It's just a pity that you didn't inherit your grandfather's level. If that was the case, I could have helped you get admitted to, hi. Never mind that. You're already doing an excellent job in continuing the legacy of your grandfather and I. We're all proud of you, Li Wei boy. Thank you, Grandpa Lu. I'll continue to do my best in ensuring the continued success of Jean Corporation, Jean Li Wei said seriously. That's a good boy. Oh, what I really wanted to say is that I am glad that you're not gay after all. Ahaha. Jean Li Wei scowled but didn't dare retort. Your grandfather's business genes can now continue to be passed on to the next generation after you. What a great relief. I'm sure that your grandmother and also your mother will be happy. Oh, speaking of them, have you told them about your woman yet? He froze for a couple of beats, then his eyes showed a sudden flash of realization. No, not yet. But I will. Soon. Oh ho why the hesitation? Liwei my boy, is your woman someone that your grandmother and mother wouldn't approve of? My girlfriend is amazing and special. That's not an answer, boy. Grandpa Lu said in a knowing tone. Fine, let's say that your woman is indeed amazing and special but I bet she's nothing compared to the girl I want to matchmake for my how how. I saw a picture of her and she's beautiful. A bit too young so their gap will be a bit big, but she's already an adult so she can make her own decisions. And the most important thing is that the girl is a genius. Ah, I can't wait for them to make me beautiful great-grandbabies. Maybe they'll inherit their mother's brains and become geniuses too. Jean Liwei didn't care about this girl Grandpa Lu was trying to matchmake for his fifth brother, but he was sure that she would never be able to compare to his baby girl. To him, no other woman could come close to his shilan, not even his own mother and grandmother. That was why, he couldn't help but retort this time. No. Grandpa Lu, I disagree with you. My girlfriend is the best. She's the real genius. Fine, I get it. Of course you think that your own woman is the best. That's the correct mindset if you want to have a peaceful life. But don't be so uptight, boy. You'll age faster, then you wouldn't be able to satisfy your woman. When I return, you must show her to me. I want to meet the girl who managed to unge you. Jean Li Wei almost choked. I'm not gay. Ahahaha. Ah. There's nothing wrong with being gay, my boy. In the end, we're all human beings. I really am not gay, he said through gritted teeth. Then he realized that he had almost the same conversation with his baby girl before. Your woman has already unged you so of course you're not one anymore. Jean Li Wei closed his eyes and sighed deeply, giving up on trying to reason with Grandpa Lu. He knew that the elderly man was just teasing him. Grandpa Lu was just too mischievous. All right, I'm going to stop now. You're always so serious, Li Wei boy. You need to learn how to loosen up. I understand, Grandpa Lu. That's a good boy. Oh, I almost forgot. Can you talk to your fifth brother? That dunderhead is insisting on flying back to China. He's not completed all his treatment yet. What if he aggravates his body and breaks his neck again? Ah, does he not know that his beloved grandpa is worried sick about him? I don't know from who he inherited that hard head of his from. He obviously got it from you, Jean Li Wei thought but didn't say out loud. Grandpa Lu, why don't you let fifth brother return here if he wants to? His condition has improved greatly. The best hospitals in our country are also great. They can resume the rest of his treatment without any problem. Hmm. You may be right, boy. I'll think about it first. The two talked some more about other matters before ending the call. Afterwards, Jean Li Wei leaned back on his opulent leather seat. Now that the legendary Lu Jianhong was returning, it seemed that the country's business world needed to prepare itself for lots of disturbance and excitement, 
you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 169 It's My Fault, Even If It's No. Gold Heights Condominium. Later that night, Iris was studying at the library office as usual. After the first two grueling weeks, she had now completely adjusted to juggling work and studies. The assignments that took her over an hour to do before, she could do now in less than half of the time. She was improving at a rapid rate, greatly pleasing Professor Schwartz and Professor Hisakawa. She was tidying up her books and notes when Jean Liwei came to pick her up as usual. She was still energetic unlike before when she just started with her lessons. Hi baby. Iris smiled at him, continuing to organize her things. He stood behind her and wrapped his arms around her waist, while his head dipped down and kissed her cheek. She turned her head towards him. Emmaman, he quickly nibbled on her lower lip before letting her go. Then he helped her in tidying up. Afterwards, he carried her princess style and headed to their bedroom. Iris hooked her arms around his neck, enjoying the feeling of being carried. She gazed at his handsome face. He had been really supportive and understanding of her busy schedule ever since she started her studies. He never complained about her not having enough time for him. For that, she felt really grateful. Thank you, she told him. H.M. For what? he asked. For being with me. He paused walking and then looked at her beautiful face. Baby, you don't need to thank me. You know I love you so I want to be with you always. Her heart skipped a beat. Before she even realized what she was doing, she was already pulling his head and kissing him hard. Jean Liwei was momentarily surprised at her sudden passion but desire for her quickly flooded within him. He groaned and then kissed her just as hard. Their tongues tangled together, fierce and hungry for each other. There was no sweetness, only pure overwhelming desire. Iris was the first one to end the kiss, roughly turning her head to the side to breathe much needed air. She felt a little giddy as she continued gasping for breath. Jean Liwei hadn't had enough, so he trailed hot and wet kisses from the corner of her mouth to her jawline and then to her ear, feeling delighted when he felt her shiver. He was still carrying her in his arms in the middle of the hallway. The two vaguely heard someone exclaim in surprise up ahead followed by a scurry of footsteps, but they didn't bother checking who it was because what did it matter? It wasn't like they were hiding their relationship from the people in their household. If Iris was in her normal state of mind, she would probably feel a little embarrassed but she was currently overcome by desire for him. Let's go to bed, she murmured. Of course he immediately listened to his baby girl, walking quickly to their bedroom. If only he didn't want her to experience a bumpy ride in his arms, he would have already ran as fast as he could. Iris opened the door and they finally entered the room. He continued walking until they fell on the bed with her on her back and him on top of her. Once again, they kissed each other intensely. He grabbed the hem of her shirt and pulled it up. She helped him remove her top before resuming their hungry kiss. One of his hands slid down from her waist to her hips and then finally to her plump behind, squeezing her, as his tongue continued to delve deeper inside her mouth. Iris moaned when his hand traced its way up from her bottom to her waist before finally settling on one of her breasts, freeing it from its bra cup. He began fondling her, flicking her already hard nipple with his fingers. She impatiently tugged at his shirt, silently telling him to take it off. Chuckling softly, he temporarily broke their kiss and obeyed. He was about to dive for her sweet mouth again when the sound of a phone's ringtone blared across the room. Oh, it's mine, Iris said and then tried to push him off her. Jean Liwei didn't budge and continued to lower his head for another kiss. She covered his mouth with her hand and gently pushed his head away. Li Wei. I need to answer my phone. Baby, ignore it. No. Sighing deeply, he very reluctantly got off her and sat on the bed, watching her scramble towards the bedside table for her phone. Hello, she answered while fixing her bra. Professor Schwartz. How may I help you? 
Jean Liwei's roving hands touched her abdomen and thigh from behind her. She turned and glared at him, pushing against his chest to make him stop. Fortunately, he stopped and sat back, but was now looking at her with a forlorn expression. She decided to ignore him for now and climbed off the bed. She needed to focus on the conversation with her instructor. Professor Schwartz called to ask if Iris saw her wallet, thinking that perhaps it might have dropped from inside her bag. While still on the phone, Iris quickly donned a satin kimono robe. Then she headed back to the library office to check for the wallet. Jean Liwei put on the shirt that he just took off and followed her like a big abandoned puppy. He helped her look around for the missing wallet. It was him who found it later under one of the couches. Iris reported it to her instructor. Professor Schwartz said that she would get it back the next day before ending the call. Done, baby. She nodded. His eyes lit up and walked towards her. She smiled and waited for him, but then remembered something. Oh, I almost forgot. I was going to talk to you about this when you picked me up earlier but you distracted me. I distracted you. You're the one who kissed me first, he thought to himself but still didn't correct her. Fine. It's my fault, even if it's not. What is it, baby, he asked instead. Earlier today, I was working with the director and producer about the film score I'm composing and they mentioned that they accepted an offer from a new production company to help finance the movie. He stayed silent under her scrutinizing gaze. The name of the company is LX Productions, she said, you're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 170 Stupid Question Iris observed Jean Liwei's expression. His poker face was almost perfect, but she still caught the flash of wariness in his eyes when she mentioned the name of the production company. She really was getting better in reading him. It's you, isn't it? she asked. Hmm. Well, darling. He stayed silent. She felt displeased that he wasn't telling her. Fine. I'll just confirm it myself. Then she headed to her desk, intending to search up the new production company using her computer. Baby, no need, he said hurriedly, pulling her arm. He took a couple of deep breaths before telling her, all right. It's me. I knew it. It's so obvious. LX. Are you angry? he asked. Her head tilted to the side, thinking whether she was feeling angry or not. Then she replied, not really. He released a sigh of relief. But I wish you told me first, she said. Sorry, baby. I know that you don't like me directly supporting your career, so I can only do it this way by supporting the film that you're involved with. But even so, I was still worried that you wouldn't allow me if I told you. You're right. I would have probably discouraged you if you told me first. That's what I thought, he said with a sigh. Well, it's too late now. The director and the producer already announced to the rest of the film crew that LX Productions will be co-producing. They'll be dejected if you suddenly pull out. Besides, I also think that they need the additional financing. It will provide them with more resources to improve the production and make the film more amazing. He nodded, agreeing with her. By the way, is LX Productions registered under your name? I'm registered as the owner but I appointed somebody else to run it for me. So publicly, nobody will know that I'm involved with the company, if that's what you're worried about. Hmm, okay, she said, although she wasn't really worried. She personally didn't mind if others discovered their relationship. After all, she didn't give a whit about what others thought. However, she wouldn't reveal it if nobody asked her. And even if someone asked her if she had a boyfriend, she would probably just confirm the relationship without revealing Jean Liwei's identity. She didn't want people hounding either of them. Besides, she imagined that it was nicer to enjoy their relationship in peace without the entire world looking at their every single movement. And also what if others started fantasizing about her man? She immediately felt angry just thinking about it. 
Jean Liwei was hers. Jean Liwei saw her scowling. He thought that she was angry after all that he secretly set up a production company to support her from the shadows. He pulled her into his arms and embraced her tightly. Don't be angry, he said. H.M. I just told you I'm not angry. Really? She nodded. Well, I feel a little annoyed that you went behind my back, but it's okay. You're already a little annoying to begin with. It's not like this is the first time. He looked crushed for a couple of seconds before managing to fix his expression. At least she only thinks I'm a little annoying and not boring. It will tragic if there ever comes a day she thinks I'm boring, he thought, trying to stay positive. He felt somewhat better. Then she wrapped her arms around his waist and pressed herself closer against his body. She returned his tight embrace. She lifted her head so that she was looking at his face. Don't feel bad anymore. I know you only did it for me. So thank you. He gave a relieved smile. Anything for you, baby. Then he lifted her up and began kissing her. Iris opened her mouth to allow him in. Her eyes closed, feeling the desire for him building up within her once again. This time, the kiss was slow and passionate. The two of them slowly tasted, pleasured, and enjoyed each other using their mouths and tongues. A few seconds had passed since they started kissing and she could already feel something hard poking against her abdomen. Then just as she expected, he broke the kiss and gently set her down on her feet. He stepped back from her so that their bodies weren't intimately touching anymore. He panted and looked up at the ceiling, obviously trying to control himself. She watched him struggling with his desire for her. She realized that she liked seeing him like this, so very different to the cold and indifferent Jean Li Wei he presented to the public, and it was all because of her. Her eyes glinted and her lips lifted into a mischievous smile. Jean Li Wei didn't notice anything amiss because he was still looking up at the ceiling, trying to calm his raging desire. That was until he tumbled back and landed hard on the couch behind him. He looked up at his baby girl in shock. She just suddenly pushed him hard on his chest. He was about to ask her why when he saw her untie her robe and let it fall from her shoulders to the floor, leaving only her bra on. What, his throat suddenly felt dry, as he watched his baby girl suddenly transform into a seductress. She walked slowly towards him and then put one of her knees on the couch beside him. She leaned forward so that she was above him looking at him with such a sexy smile that he felt like coming that very instant. Fortunately, he was able to control himself, barely. Baby, what are you doing, he asked, keeping his tone light even though he was visibly trembling in excitement. What a stupid question, she said in a low voice. Then she lifted her other leg so that she was kneeling astride him. However, she didn't sit directly on his lap. She remained in a kneeling position, looking down at him. Take off your shirt, she ordered. His queen had spoken. It would be a crime to defy her. His hand seemed to be in super speed mode because his shirt was taken off in no time. Afterwards, he looked up at her in anticipation. Iris felt so entertained watching him. His expression looked like he was telling her, I did what you told me. Aren't I a good boy? Praise me. Reward me. She couldn't help it. He threw her head back and laughed. She even clutched her abdomen because she was laughing so hard. Jean Liwei's face fell. Did he do something wrong? Why was she laughing at him? Oh, Liwei. You're so cute. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 171 tonight will be for you. Jean Liwei's mind went blank for a couple of seconds as Iris desperately tried controlling her laughter. She fell beside him on the couch, giggling. The seductress was gone, replaced by a mischievous girl instead. She said he was cute. If it was another person who called him this way, he would have already showed that person that, cute, should never be a word used to describe him. But since it was his baby girl, 
he was kind of liking it, but only a little. Although he personally liked it, his little brother down below clearly didn't. His hard-on was already softening. He sighed. However, he was still very surprised by her sudden seductive actions just a few moments ago. Recently, he was noticing that she was becoming more playful with him. Of course he was happy because it meant that she was feeling more comfortable with him. But now it seemed that her newfound playfulness could also transform her into an irresistible seductress. If this happened again, he didn't think he would be able to control himself anymore. He wondered from who she was learning this from. An image of Dominic quickly appeared in his mind. It seemed that he needed to talk to the assistant and tell him not to teach his baby girl this kind of things. As for Iris, she finally calmed down and was now looking at Jean Leeway with teasing eyes. She just imitated his actions a little from when he seduced her before. When he was the one seducing her, he would take off all his clothes and stand in front of her completely naked. But she just took off her robe this time, leaving her bra and pants on, and he already looked so excited. She didn't expect that such a simple thing would be so effective on him. Was it this easy to seduce him? If Jean Leeway could only hear her thoughts, he would know that it was wrong of him to blame Dom for corrupting his baby girl when it was actually all his fault. Poor innocent Dom. Iris stood up and picked up the robe she dropped earlier before putting it back on. He stood up as well, sighing. It seemed that sexy time was over. He felt a little disappointed but told himself that this was for the best. After all, he wanted both of their first time to be special. Then he heard her say, let's continue in our bedroom. Damn you, Dominic, he cursed in his mind, even as he began to feel aroused again. Dom was about to sleep on his bed when he sneezed. Not once but twice. Eh. Someone must be talking shit about me. I wonder who. Humph. Must be some insecure bastard jealous of my handsomeness. Back in the couple's bedroom. The two were once again kissing as they tumbled on the bed. This time, Iris was on top. Her robe was already discarded on the floor. Seeing that Jean Leeway's skin was clear, she began sucking and nibbling on his neck, chest and even his abs, leaving tiny red love bites. She straightened and looked down at her new markings in triumph. Now she understood when he told her before that he liked seeing the hickeys he made on her. Suddenly, she was flipped over. Now she was on her back while he was on top of her. You're very naughty today, he said in a low, husky voice. His eyes were dark and his expression looked like he wanted to devour her whole. Am I? She blinked at him a few times. Yeah. I can barely control myself. Then don't, she said. Her hands reached between them to the waistband of his pajama pants. She could feel his erection through the cloth. You've been very understanding and supportive of me these past few weeks even when I don't have time for you. You've been holding yourself back and I know that you've been uncomfortable sleeping on the same bed and not doing anything because I've been so tired. So tonight will be for you, okay? He inhaled sharply, feeling his erection becoming even harder. His eyes darkened with anticipation and desire. Oh baby. He gave her a hot and wet open-mouthed kiss, sucking at her lips and tongue. Iris moaned, letting him feast on her mouth, while her hands were busy tugging his pajama pants down. Finally, his erection sprang free, poking her on the abdomen. She wrapped her hands around his length, stroking him slowly. Jean Leeway hissed and closed his eyes. His hips couldn't help moving a little in time with her strokes. When he opened his eyes, they were predatory. He lifted her upper body and reached behind her to unhook her bra. He tossed the bra to the floor and immediately cupped her breasts with his hands. Then he captured a nipple in his mouth and sucked hard. She gasped and threw her head back, moaning. One hand continued to stroke his erection while she ran her other hand all over his back. Then she told him, I said tonight will be for you. Lie down. He lifted his head to look at her. The corner of his mouth curved up. Giving her a quick kiss, 
he obeyed and got off her to lay on his back. Iris sat and focused on stroking his erection. She was observing his facial reactions, trying to see if she was pleasuring him enough. Baby. Hmm. Do you want to try something that will make me feel even better than this? Oh. What is it? He raised his hand and traced her lips with a finger before gently pushing it inside her mouth. Later. Jean Li Wei. This tastes horrible. That's the strawberry one. Here, let's try the mint. Maybe it'll taste better. He tore open a new packet and replaced the strawberry-flavored condom from his erection with a mint-flavored one. Here. Iris didn't look enthusiastic but seeing his excited expression, she lowered her head and took him in her mouth. She heard him groan and was pleased, but then the horrible taste assaulted her. Grimacing, she immediately let him go and lifted her head. I don't like this either, she said. She desperately wanted to run to the bathroom to rinse her mouth. All right. Let's try another one. How about banana? No. Vanilla? No. I don't want these condoms. They taste horrible, like chemicals. Why don't you try tasting them too? He gave a disgusted look. No way. Her eyes narrowed. What? she asked in a dangerous tone. You made me taste all these crap but you won't even try them yourself. You're despicable. Baby, wait. He pulled her when she tried to climb off the bed. All right. I'm sorry. I'll try tasting them, okay? Crossing her arms across her breasts, she watched him open a new condom. He swiped a finger on it and then brought the finger to his tongue. You're right, baby. It doesn't taste good. She pursed her lips at his action. Humph. Then she took off the condom from his erection and threw it away. I'll do it without a condom. It's not like I'll get pregnant using my mouth. Are you sure, he asked, even though he was already trembling in excitement. She nodded then went to work immediately without waiting for his reply. She first licked the head, swirling her tongue around it, and then slowly took his erection inside her mouth. Then she paused. He could feel her uncertainty, so he encouraged her. Just like that, baby. It feels good. She continued for about a few more times before letting him go and sitting up. Wiping her lips with the back of her hand, she said, I think I need to search how to do this properly. No need. He grabbed her before she could get her laptop. I'll teach you. Teach me. Have you had this done on you before? She asked, glaring at him. Of course not. Then how can you teach me? Baby, it's my P asterisk NIS. I know what makes it feel good. So you don't need to search it up. I don't want you watching some other guy's D asterisk CK, even if it's for research purposes. She pouted but eventually agreed. After all, she also didn't want him looking at another woman's naked body, even for research purposes. Fine. Then she lowered her head once again and took him in her mouth. He constantly encouraged her and told her what felt good. Try sucking it, baby. Yes, ah. A bit gentler. Oh, yes. Like that. After some time, Iris was getting the hang of it. She bobbed her head up and down faster and sucked hard until Jean Leeway couldn't help but tighten his hold on her hair, as he stiffened and groaned loudly. His hot release flooded inside her mouth and she instinctively swallowed. When he was done, she rose and covered her mouth. She felt like gagging but when she saw his pleased expression, she fought against the urge to spit. You swallowed it, he looked at her a smug expression on his face. It tastes bad. He only laughed weakly. But I guess I'll get used to it. He stopped laughing. His eyes darkened once again. Iris' eyes widened as she saw something stirring and standing up once again. No way. My mouth is already tired. I'm going to sleep. Good night. 
You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 172 Godchild In the next few days, Jin Li Wei noticed that everyone in the household kept on giving him fruits to eat even when he didn't ask for it. He didn't mind and ate them all without protesting but after more than a week, he started thinking that something was up. So when a maid gently placed a plate of freshly cut honeydew melon and cantaloupe beside him while he was reviewing some documents at the library office, he couldn't stop himself from asking. Why do you keep giving me fruits every day? It's what the young miss instructed us to do, sir. He already suspected as much. I see. All right, thank you. You can go. When the maid left, he looked at the clock. It was a weekend and both he and Iris didn't need to go out for work today. However, his baby girl was very busy at her music studio at home working on the film score. Although he wanted to spend time together with her, he also didn't want to bother her so he could only wait until she was finished. Later at lunchtime. Iris joined everyone for lunch. Jean Li Wei greeted her and gave her a quick kiss on the lips before pulling a chair for her. He was now used to eating together with everyone in the household. They usually ate in the kitchen and would only use the formal dining area when Iris instructors stayed for dinner. Jiang Yingyu and her son, Little Jun, also joined them. They spent the morning playing with ice cream and popcorn at the cat room. The nanny was on day off today. When Little Jun saw Iris, he immediately stretched out his little arms and struggled within his mother's embrace, crying out for Iris. He wanted to be held by his aunt. Little June, let your aunt Shulan eat her meal first. Be good, Jiang Yingyu said. Little June's cute little face scrunched up and he started crying. Jiang Yingyu looked at everyone helplessly. It's fine. I'll hold him, Iris said and gestured for Jiang Yingyu to give her the toddler. Little June immediately stopped crying and started babbling happily to his aunt. Sorry about this, Shulan, Jiang Yingyu said. Upon Iris' request, she stopped calling her Miss Shulan. After all, as Iris explained it, she was the mother of Iris' nephew. She could act formally when she was at work as Iris' bodyguard but once she wasn't on duty, there was no need to be so formal. Iris sat little June on her lap. Jiang Yingyu moved and sat on the chair beside Iris to feed her child. Jean Li Wei sat on Iris' other side. He watched his baby girl pampering the child. He couldn't help but imagine how it would feel if it was their own child on her lap instead. How wonderful it must be if he could have a child with her in the future. Little June turned his head and looked straight at Jean Li Wei. The baby and the man looked at each other with curiosity. Suddenly, little June beamed and giggled. Then he stretched out his little arms towards Jean Li Wei. Iris chuckled and told Jean Li Wei, he wants you to hold him. Here. Jean Li Wei moved his torso away and put his hands up in front of him, looking alarmed and shaking his head. No, no. Baby, please no. I don't know how to hold a child. She ignored him and pushed little June in his arms. He didn't have any choice, so he cautiously held the baby. He was worried that he would drop the child, so he didn't dare move. Then little June pointed a finger at Jean Li Wei's face and said, Papa. Everyone was shocked. Iris immediately took the child from him and gently told the child, No, little June. He's not your father. Little June gave her a confused look, then pointed at Jean Li Wei again. Papa? No, not Papa. He's your uncle Li Wei. The child scrunched his face. Then he pointed a finger at Iris. Mama? Iris froze and then blinked. No, little June. I'm not your mama. I'm your Aunt Shulan. This is your mama, she said, pulling Jiang Yingyu who was sitting beside her. Jiang Yingyu had an awkward expression on her face. Little June looked confused. He pointed at Jiang Yingyu. Mommy. Then he pointed at Iris. Mama. Oh. 
I get it. Dom exclaimed, clapping his hands together. Big Sis Yu is Mommy and Boss is Mama. And then Sir Boss is Papa. Kaya. This is so adorbs. Wait. Let me take a video of this. He took out his phone and started recording. Juni boy, where's mommy? Little June pointed at Jiang Yingyu. Mommy. Where's mama? The child pointed at Iris. Mama. Where's papa? The child pointed at Jean Liwei. Papa. Yua. My heart can't take this cuteness. My cutie patootie Juni boy is so adorbs. So smart. Dom bounced on his seat in excitement as he continued recording. Of course, everyone started praising the toddler and gushing about him. Iris turned to Jiang Yingyu beside her. Where did he learn to say all these? I honestly don't know, Jiang Yingyu answered helplessly. Then she looked at Dom with a suspicious expression on her face. Hey! Why are you looking at me like that, big sis you? Dom pouted and then looked at his sir boss mournfully. Why is everyone blaming me when I didn't even do anything? What does he call my brother then? Iris asked Jiang Yingyu. Jiang Yingyu stiffened at the mention of Long Hui but still answered, he calls him Dada. Hmm. I see. Iris gently poked her finger on little June's squishy cheek. At least he's not confused. He calls us differently. Jiang Yingyu laughed awkwardly. Then Iris turned to Jin Liwei. So you're now his papa. Jin Liwei nodded. Surprisingly, he didn't mind it especially since he was paired up with his baby girl. He was the papa and she was the mama. He also gently poked the child on the cheek, making little Jun giggle. He looked at Jiang Yingyu. From now on, Xiulan and I are his godparents. Jiang Yingyu was taken aback at first and then her eyes filled with tears. Yes. Thank you very much. Please take care of little Jun. N. Everyone was in high spirits. The cook announced that she would prepare a sumptuous meal for dinner later to celebrate. Since little Jun was still too young, they would need to wait a few more years for him to formally pay his respects to his godparents. Jean Liwei looked at the child sitting on his baby girl's lap. He would call his butler later and instruct him to buy some baby clothes and other baby things to gift to his first godchild, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 173 Test Subject After the meal, Jiang Yingyu took little Jun to one of the spare bedrooms for a nap. Dom and one of the maids headed to the cat room to feed and play with ice cream and popcorn. E Mei and the cook began planning the sumptuous dinner for later to celebrate the appointment of Iris and Jean Liwei as little June's godparents. Iris and Jean Liwei headed to the living area to relax and cuddle on the couch while watching random shows on TV. Iris wanted to rest before returning to her music studio to continue working on the film score. She already finished composing more than half of the planned music pieces and even recorded some of them with her symphony orchestra and four-piece band. The overall atmosphere of most of the pieces were dark, depressing, and foreboding. Iris would always feel emotionally drained whenever she finished working on them. Only the last pieces meant for the film's ending had brighter, more hopeful yet bittersweet tone. For now, she needed some time to recharge. She felt very motivated to finish the film score as soon as possible without rushing it. After all, quality was her utmost priority. She almost couldn't wait for the moment to hear her music used on a film. A little sleepy, she yawned. She rested her head on Jean Liwei's shoulder. She felt him kiss her forehead, making her smile. She was about to take a nap when Jean Liwei started talking. Baby. Hmm. Why did you instruct everyone to keep feeding me fruits every day? Oh, that. She shifted her head so that she was looking at his face. It's to improve the taste of your semen. It tastes bad, you know. 
I read from various sources that certain foods, especially fruits, can improve the taste. I want to know if it's really true, that's why I'm experimenting on you. He couldn't help it. This talk was arousing him. But his baby girl was exhausted right now. He took a few deep breaths to control himself. I see, he said, keeping his tone light. I think I also heard about this before. So I'm your test subject. Emmerman, yes. Use me all you want then. This body of mine is all yours, baby. She giggled and then bit his neck, not too hard but not too light either. He groaned. It hurt but he didn't mind. She was just being playful with him again. You make it sound like I'm exploiting you, she said. You just need to eat the fruits. I'm the one who's going to do the tasting anyway so don't act like you're being taken advantage of. He chuckled. True. To be honest, he was feeling very excited about this experiment of hers. He was hoping that she would start with the actual investigation very soon. A certain something on the lower half of his body was also getting excited, slowly coming to life and straining against his pants. He recited the value of pi to calm down and to control the dangerous direction of his thoughts. Iris burrowed deeper in Jean Leeway's embrace, inhaling his familiar masculine scent. His breathing was slowly lulling her to sleep. Baby. H.M. What? Don't you think it's about time we visit your father and his wife and have dinner with them as a couple? Oh. She lifted her head from his shoulder and looked at him. You want to go with me to the long compound for dinner? N. Your father already knows about our relationship but I still haven't paid my respects to him as your boyfriend. We're living together now. I think it's only proper that I assure him that I'm serious with my intentions to his daughter. Hmm all right. I'll give him a call and coordinate a schedule. He gave her a quick kiss on the lips. No rush. I know you're busy. I was just telling you so that you'll keep it in mind. Okay. He was about to say something but hesitated. Hmm. She tilted her head to the side. What is it? After we meet with your father, I was thinking. What? A few seconds passed before he spoke again. I was thinking that if you don't mind, I would like to introduce you to my family, my grandmother and mother. He didn't mention his younger brother, Jean Chonlin. Although his baby girl already assured him that she felt nothing for his brother, he still felt a little jealous. Oh. Iris was surprised. I won't force you if you don't want to, he said hurriedly. It's just that I want them to meet the woman I love who is also the most important person in my life right now. Her heart skipped a beat and she felt warm inside. Okay. Really? You'll meet them, he asked. She nodded. He sighed in relief. Great. I'll introduce you to my grandmother and mother after we have dinner with your father. Okay. Then suddenly she began to feel nervous. Noticing the change in her emotions, he pulled her closer to him and kissed the top of her head. Don't worry. You're amazing. Just be yourself. Iris nodded and continued cuddling with him. She had the urge to investigate Jean Leeway's grandmother and mother so that she would know what they were like before meeting them but quickly discarded the idea as soon as it entered her mind. Jean Leeway was her boyfriend. She felt that it would be rude and disrespectful to investigate his family members without his knowledge. She was originally planning to take a nap but her earlier sleepiness was now gone. This feeling of nervousness was very unpleasant, you're tuning in to the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 174 Meeting Grandpa Lu A white limousine waited outside the condominium building. Although it was a wealthy area with most of the residents owning luxury cars, Passersby still couldn't help but gawk at the vehicle because some of them recognized that it was custom made from a limited edition series. Iris, together with her instructors Professor Schwartz and Professor Hisakawa, walked out of the lobby to the limo. 
It was a bright sunny day and there were plenty of people walking about on the streets. Iris made sure to wear big sunglasses and face mask to avoid being recognized. A chauffeur greeted them and opened the limo door. Professor Schwartz climbed in first, then Iris, and finally Professor Hisakawa. They were on their way to meet the business mentor Professor Erwin Dupont personally assigned for Iris. The mentor was supposed to arrive weeks ago but for some reason, he or she kept on being delayed. Based on her instructor's barely controlled excitement, Iris figured that the mentor was someone they greatly respected. She could sense that they even regarded the mentor on the same level as Professor Dupont. Who was this person that he or she would be on the same level as the headmaster of Cross Academy? The mysterious mentor sent the chauffeured limousine to pick them up. She was very curious about what kind of person her mentor would be. She had no idea where they were going, but she was not alone. It seemed that her instructors also didn't know. All they knew was that they were going to one of the mentor's residences in the country. About an hour later, the car entered a suburban area. It looked like a peaceful neighborhood with big quaint houses. The residences looked well-to-do but still relatively humble compared to the ostentatious mansions in many exclusive villages. Iris initially thought that their destination was one of the quaint houses, but she was wrong. They passed through the lovely neighborhood to drive along a cemented road within a forest. They were stopped at a checkpoint before a massive gilded gate with a golden plaque embossed with the character, Lou. The uniformed security guards manning the gate recognized the limousine and even greeted the chauffeur with a nod, yet they still checked the passengers inside. Professor Hisakawa confirmed their identities to the guards before the massive gilded gate was opened. They drove for another twenty minutes before finally seeing a huge sprawling Mediterranean-style mansion. Tall palm trees lined the long cobblestone driveway leading to the mansion's main entrance. The limo parked at the end of the driveway. The chauffeur opened the door for them and they disembarked. Iris looked around, wondering if they were still in China. It felt like they were transported to another country. She inhaled deeply. Even the air felt fresher here. Ahaha. Ah. You're finally here. I almost fell asleep waiting for all of you. What took you so long? I want to know. An elderly man's voice speaking in English boomed from within the entranceway. They all watched as a tall sprightly elderly man walked towards them. He had a head full of grey hair styled in the classic side part. His neatly groomed grey moustache couldn't hide the big smile on his still handsome face. Obviously, he had wrinkles due to his advanced age, but compared to other elderly men, he looked decades younger. He brimmed with energy. Professor Schwartz and Professor Hisakawa stepped forward and respectfully greeted him. Professor Liu, what an honor to finally meet you again after so long. Greetings, Professor Liu. Thank you for inviting us here today. Bah! What Professor Liu? Stop calling me that. The elderly man expressed his displeasure. That DuPont bastard only gave me such a stuck-up title so that he could order me around because he's the headmaster. Humph. The two professors laughed awkwardly. They shook the elderly man's hand. Both of them tried hard not to wince by his tight grip and energetic handshake. Still beautiful, Kalisha. Thank you, Sir Lu. And you, Akio. I know you're a writer but don't spend all your time holed up indoors. You look so sallow. Spend more time outside and soak in some sunlight. Professor Hisakawa coughed in embarrassment. I understand, Sir Lu. And you little girl, don't just stand there. Come and let me see you. Iris smiled and stepped forward. Hello, sir. My name is Long Shilan. I've been looking forward to meeting you, sir. Thank you for having us today. Good. Very good. The elderly man nodded as he examined Iris from head to toe and back up again. He looked pleased at what he was seeing. You look even prettier than the photo that DuPont bastard sent me. Iris didn't know how to respond so she just smiled respectfully. Well, girl. 
My name is Lu Jianhong and starting today, I'll be your business mentor. So call me grandpa. She blinked a few times. Eh. They just met and he already wanted her to call him grandpa. Wasn't he supposed to be her business mentor? Shouldn't she call him Sir Lu like the others or perhaps even teacher? Where's your tongue, girl? He asked in an impatient tone. Hurry up and call me grandpa. Uh, Iris hesitated. I look forward to learning from you, Grandpa Lu. Ahaha. Ah. Very good. Come, chill on my girl. You too Kalisha and Akio. Let me show you inside my humble home. Iris looked around. Humble. This massive mansion. They followed Grandpa Lu as he showed them around while chatting. Suddenly, he turned to Iris and asked, Your father is the head of Long Industries, correct? Yes, sir. What sir? I told you to call me Grandpa. My apologies, Grandpa Lu. He nodded, satisfied with her response. Then he continued, So how is your relationship with the Longs? Are they supportive of you being admitted to Cross Academy? They don't know. I didn't tell them. What? Why not? Are you on bad terms with your family? I was but recently my relationship with my father has improved. As for the others, she shrugged. Ah ha ha ha. I'm not the least bit surprised. The Longs are a bunch of snobs since long ago. I was worried that you'll be stuck up like them. I'm glad that you seem like a nice girl. Grandpa looked very pleased. Then he asked, So she'll on my girl, tell Grandpa, are you single? You're tuning in to the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 175 My Special Fish Well? Why aren't you answering? Are you single or not? I want to know. Grandpa Lu continued to ask when Iris failed to reply immediately. After a few more seconds of hesitation, she finally answered, I'm not single, Grandpa Lu. I have a boyfriend. What? He looked surprised and enraged. Yes, it's true, Professor Schwartz said. Akio and I already met him. Professor Hisakawa nodded. He's not bad. Grandpa Lu scowled. He asked Iris. How long have you been in a relationship with your, humph, boyfriend? A few months. Oh. Grandpa Lu's eyes lit up. Not that long yet. Ahaha. Ah. I see. Good. Iris tilted her head to the side, confused. Shilan my girl, you're still very young. Not to mention you're beautiful, talented and a cross academy student. You should allow yourself to explore the world and meet lots of other people first. I'm sure that you like your boyfriend now, but what do you know? You might meet someone else who you'll like more than him in the future. So don't be so hasty. What would you do if you discover that your boyfriend is not the right man for you? As the saying goes, there are plenty more fish in the sea. Although Iris agreed with Grandpa Lu's words, she still couldn't help but feel defensive of Jean Liwei. Grandpa Lu, I know that there are plenty more fish in the sea, but right now my boyfriend is my special fish. I like him very much. Grandpa Lu was slightly taken aback by her strong-willed response. It seemed like the girl had quite the stubborn streak. Not bad. He inwardly approved of it. However, he was unhappy that she seemed to really like her boyfriend. At this rate, matchmaking her to his grandson would be more challenging than he first thought. Damn it. Who's her boyfriend? That bastard. How dare he get his claws on this girl before my how how? Should I investigate him and then scare him off? Well, a boyfriend is not a husband, so my how how still has a chance. While Grandpa Lu was mentally cursing Iris' boyfriend, they arrived at a wide veranda overlooking a beautiful and lush rose garden. They sat on comfortable barrel chairs. A butler appeared and began serving them refreshments. 
Iris listened in fascination to her instructor's conversations about their rich experiences at Cross Academy. Although she was also an alumnus of the Academy in her previous life, her education was extremely cloistered. Her interactions were limited to only her instructors and Professor Erwin Dupont who she also met as Evelina. And because of her special family background, Professor Dupont also made sure to limit the people who knew about her even within the Academy itself. Although most of the Cross Academy students and alumni were trustworthy, the Vetrovs had many enemies. It was better to be safe than sorry. This was why she wasn't familiar with her current instructors before meeting them, especially Grandpa Lou who seemed to be on the same level as Professor Dupont when it came to standing among the Cross Academy alumni. Then the conversation moved to Iris' progress in her studies. Professor Schwartz, Shulon is improving very quickly. I actually have to revise my lesson plans several times because her level is increasing by leaps and bounds. Professor Hisakawa, same here. Shilan's comprehension skills are perhaps the best I've ever encountered among my students. She just absorbs everything. That's why Kalisha and I are thinking that maybe she's ready to apply her skills in real life. Iris' eyes lit up. This was the first time she heard about this. She also wanted to test the knowledge and skills she learned from their lessons in real-life situations. Ho, Grandpa Lou stroked his perfectly groomed mustache. So how do you plan on doing that? Professor Schwartz, my idea is to have Shulan do some interpreting jobs. Something easy at the start. Professor Hisakawa, I'll probably just have her translate some printed documents or even books. What kind of ideas are those? Do you think she's a grade schooler? Grandpa Lu shook his head, his expression showing displeasure. She's a cross academy student, for goodness sake. From what I'm hearing so far, Chulon is a fast learner. How can she improve even further if you don't give her something challenging? The two instructors were quiet for a few seconds. Professor Hisakawa, Sir Lu, do you have an idea on how we should test her? Professor Schwartz, Please advise us. Ha! Of course I have a great idea. China will be hosting a huge international business conference in a few months. Many foreign leaders and representatives from some of the biggest companies in the world will be attending, including the business leaders in this country. Let's just throw the girl in there and see if she can take the pressure and survive in one piece. Ah ha ha ha! Professor Schwartz frowned. Don't you think it's too early for that, Sir Lu? It hasn't been that long yet since she started studying with us. I agree. It might be too much for her especially since it's going to be her first time, Professor Hisakawa said. TSK TSK. Don't you know that coddling your students too much will stunt their development? You'll never know what she's really capable of if you're afraid of throwing her in hot water. A restrained genius is no genius at all. Please let me do it, Iris spoke up. The two professors looked at her. Seeing her determined expression, they could only sigh. Professor Schwartz, are you sure? Iris nodded. I want to do it. Ah ha ha ha. Very good, she'll on my girl. Grandpa Lou's delighted voice boomed. That's the spirit. A Cross Academy student must have that kind of guts. Or else I'll have to blame that DuPont bastard for weakening the Academy with spineless recruits. Professor Hisakawa cleared his throat awkwardly. Don't worry, my girl. Grandpa will make sure you're more than ready and fully equipped for your test during the conference. Leave everything to Grandpa. I'll teach you all about business so you never stumble on any unfamiliar terms when you're interpreting or translating. Then a time will come that you'll participate in the conference as a business leader and not just as an interpreter. Iris started to feel excited. She bowed her head respectfully. Please guide me, Grandpa Lou. Of course. Grandpa Lou felt pleased with her. By the way, I think some Canadian representatives will be present in the conference. You'll likely meet some of them. Have you been to Canada? It's nice and fresh out there. My grandson lives in Toronto. He's handsome and charming. 
I think the two of you will get along well. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 176 A Student of Lu Jianhong Iris smiled politely, nodding. She wondered why Grandpa Lu suddenly started talking about his grandson out of nowhere. However, she wasn't really surprised because she noticed that he had a tendency to suddenly veer off topic during conversations. It seemed that Grandpa Lu really doted on his grandson. He spent a few minutes raving about his beloved grandson. My how how, I mean Zeheo is 30 years old this year so he's a whole decade older than you. But that shouldn't matter. Age shouldn't be an issue when it comes to relationships, I mean, friendships. Am I right? Yes, Iris agreed. The two professors also nodded. Shulan my girl, tell grandpa, how old is your boyfriend? I think that having a mature older man like my grandson is better than a young boy around your age. Mature older men tend to be already financially secured and established in their careers, so they'll more likely dote and pamper their lovers compared to younger fellows who are still struggling to establish themselves. She nodded again, agreeing with him. My boyfriend is 31. He's also already financially secured and established in his career. Grandpa Lu was surprised and couldn't say anything for a few moments. What? Her boyfriend is even older than my how how. Damn it. Who is this bastard? I want to know. Professor Schwartz couldn't help but giggle. Professor Hisakawa was able to maintain his composure but his twitching mouth betrayed his real emotions. Unlike Iris who still had no idea what was going on, the two professors knew exactly what Grandpa Lu was trying to do. Iris only thought that Grandpa Lu was really proud of his grandson so he couldn't help but rave about him to other people. The two professors knew the identity of Iris' boyfriend. They also knew that Lu Jianhong had a connection with Jean Liwei and Jean Corporation. They could have chosen to clarify the situation to the elderly man but they chose to remain silent. They were feeling very entertained. They couldn't wait until both Lu Jianhong and Jean Liwei figured out their unexpected new connection through Iris. Later, Iris and the two professors stayed for dinner. They ate a lavish Greek feast which tasted even better when eaten in the Mediterranean-style home. After dinner, Professor Schwartz and Professor Hisakawa excused themselves after Lu Jianhong suggested for them to tour the rest of the mansion. Although it was worded as a suggestion, the two professors knew that it was more of an order. It seemed that Lu Jianhong wanted to have a private talk with his new student. They followed the housekeeper for the tour. Lu Jianhong led Iris from the dining area to an opulent lounge room. It had a big enclosed stone fireplace. It wasn't burning at the moment, but Iris imagined that it must be nice to stay in this room during winter. There were small olive trees planted in big terracotta pots and some flowering plants to add color. In the middle of the room, there was a tiered fountain with a statue of a voluptuous woman on top holding a jug from which water poured out. It completed the classic Mediterranean ambience. Iris felt very impressed. She thought that the entire property was ostentatious when she first saw it, but as she spent more time inside the mansion, she began to appreciate its classic and luxurious elegance. They sat down and the butler began serving them hot rooibos herbal tea blend. Iris sipped her cup and nodded in appreciation. After serving them, the butler left and returned a few minutes later to hand his master an envelope. He bowed before leaving again to give them privacy. All right, Shulan my girl. Let's start talking business, Grandpa Lu said. Iris set her cup down on the low table in front of her. She straightened and faced Grandpa Lu, an attentive expression on her face. He started by asking her about her current financial situation. Iris was comfortable at the moment. Very, comfortable to be exact. A few weeks ago, Xiao Yu finally reached the 1 billion RMB mark, officially making Iris a billionaire in the country. In addition to this, her money that she stowed in various bank accounts across the world had a collective total amount of about 60 million US dollars. 
It was actually less than half of what Xiao Yu was currently managing. Iris was truthful, admitting that the majority of the 60 million was earned from hacking jobs. Grandpa Lu didn't bat an eye since he was already aware of how she was admitted to Cross Academy. He knew that she was an excellent hacker but didn't really know the specifics. He wasn't really well versed in this field. He trusted Professor DuPont's decision. If Professor DuPont dared admit Iris personally, then it meant that he saw something special in her. This was proven by assigning her notable instructors like Professor Schwartz, Professor Hisakawa, and of course the legendary business genius Lu Jianhong. Hmm. Not bad, Grandpa Lu commented, rubbing his perfectly groomed mustache. Especially since you're still so young. However, as my student, this is far from my standards. Let me take a look at your financial portfolio in our next meeting. Better that you bring your financial manager as well. I understand, Grandpa Lu. Next, they talked about properties. Iris actually didn't own other properties besides her penthouse. Properties didn't really interest her that much. She was already satisfied with her penthouse. How naive. Shilon my girl, as my student, real estate should be one of your priorities. I'll teach you its importance next time. She nodded, mentally taking note. They discussed her other sources of income as well. Currently, she was already starting to earn from her music career. Compared to the rate Xiao Yu was earning for her, her current music earnings were rather insignificant. However, Iris didn't mind. She loved music and even if she didn't earn anything from it, she would still gladly do it without complaining. Besides, she technically just started out. Once she stabilized her music career, the money would surely come. After revealing her finances, Grandpa Lu had a thoughtful expression. He was already starting to formulate a rough financial plan for her. As his student it was his mission to mold her into a successful business figure. This is for you, he said, handing her the envelope his butler gave to him earlier. Iris opened it and took out what was inside. Her eyes widened and she looked at him in shock. Grandpa Lu, this. Ahaha. Ah. Consider it as a welcome gift to my student. She ran her fingers on it, smiling. Thank you very much, Grandpa Lu. You're welcome, my girl. As my student, it's only natural that you should have one. Use it wisely. If you don't, I have the power to ask them to revoke it. Understood? She nodded. It was the legendary exclusive black card with her name on it. Then she read the accompanying document. Once again, she was surprised because unlike the exorbitant amount other cardholders were paying, she didn't need to pay any annual fees while enjoying the same privileges as them. So this was how it felt like to be a student of Lu Jianhong. Dot you're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 177 The Next Dragon Two days later, Iris began her official lessons with Grandpa Lu. Since his Mediterranean property was quite far from her penthouse, Grandpa Lu moved to one of his properties that was the nearest to her place. It was a penthouse unit in a condominium building called Platinum Sky only a few blocks away from Gold Heights. Professor Schwartz revealed to Iris that Lu Jianhong owned all the Platinum Sky buildings in the country. It seemed that there were also other Platinum Sky properties in other countries across Asia as well. Xiao Yu also came with her. He had no idea who he was meeting with. Iris only told him that her new business mentor wanted to examine her entire financial portfolio and also to talk to her financial manager. When he first heard about it, Xiao Yu was very unhappy. He thought that he was more than enough to manage her finances. There was no need for a business mentor. After all, he already achieved their goal of making her into a billionaire in her early twenties. He was doing an excellent job, if he may say so himself. He initially declined but Iris was insistent. She was the boss, so even if he didn't like it, he still went with her to meet this so-called business mentor. It felt like he was getting ready for battle. 
he was already assuming that the business mentor would not be able to compare to his knowledge and skills. He would surely show Iris that he alone was enough to handle her finances. But when he met Iris' so-called business mentor, Xiao Yu's mind went blank. He stood frozen and stared with unseeing eyes at Grandpa Lu. Eh? What's wrong with him? I want to know. I said hello but he's not responding. Grandpa Lu squinted his eyes at the frozen financial manager. Iris shrugged. He'll be fine, Grandpa Lu. I think that's a normal reaction from him. He did that with me before too. My assistant and I thought that he was having a stroke. He'll return to normal soon. When Xiao Yu regained his senses, he watched Iris and the legendary Lu Jianhong chatting comfortably with each other. What was going on? Was it the end of the world? S. Sir L. Lu Jianhong, he exclaimed. His usually stern expression was replaced with disbelief. Don't shout. I may be old but I'm not deaf. So I hear you're the financial advisor of Shilan my girl. What are you waiting for? Introduce yourself. Aya, yes. Xiao Yu almost stumbled on his own feet as he hurriedly stepped forward and almost bit his tongue in his excitement to introduce himself. This was Lu Jianhong. The legendary business genius and the true king of the country's business world. After introducing himself, Xiao Yu handed the elderly man his business card with trembling fingers. Iris stood at the side, amused at her financial manager's sudden subservient behavior. It seemed that her new mentor was really someone impressive and respected by people of the business world. After the greetings, Grandpa Lu led Iris and Xiao Yu to his home office. The place was almost bare and looked like it wasn't used often. I've had this place for years, but this is actually the first time that I'm staying here. I even forgot that I have this property. Ahahaha. <laughs> but I still prefer the open fields and nature than the bustling city. Grandpa Lu turned to Iris. Shilan my girl, why don't you, Kalisha and Akio move to my mansion instead? It's pretty big. We'll all fit in there. Iris smiled before shaking her head. Thank you for the invitation, Grandpa Lu, but I can't. I'm currently living with my boyfriend. What? Aren't you progressing too fast in your relationship? You have to think things through carefully first. She just smiled politely, not saying anything, but Grandpa Lu could feel her stubbornness. While the two were talking, Xiao Yu sat in a daze. Was he dreaming? If he wasn't seeing the evidence with his own eyes, he would never believe that Iris' new business mentor was the Lu Jianhong. How did this happen? And from hearing them talk, it seemed that they were quite close. She was calling him Grandpa, for goodness sake. This was just unbelievable. After the small talk and refreshments, they began to talk business. The boisterous Grandpa Lu suddenly became serious, strict and focused. He carefully studied every detail of Iris' financial portfolio that Xiao Yu was currently managing. He questioned Xiao Yu several times. At first, Xiao Yu felt very nervous in front of the business legend but as time went on, he calmed down and stopped hesitating in his answers. After all, this was his element and what he was good at. Grandpa Lu stroked his mustache as he listened to the financial manager. He nodded, approving of him. From now on, you'll also meet me regularly, he told Xiao Yu. The three of us will strategize on how to improve this girl's finances. We are going to raise the next dragon of the business world. Don't you find it exciting? Ahahaha. <laughs> Xiao Yu was shocked but his head was already nodding on its own. Then he looked at the nonchalant Iris who was calmly sipping her tea, as if she wasn't the dragon the business legend was referring to. This, what in the world was happening today? You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 178 For the Sake of Her Experiment Gene Corporation President, here is the ripe papaya that you ordered, Su Tian said as he set the plate of the sliced fruit on his boss desk. N. 
Jean Liwei nodded. He picked up the fork and started eating while reading documents. Su Tian bowed before returning to his own desk outside the door. In the past few days, the president suddenly started eating lots of fruits. Before this, the president barely ate anything while working. He would even skip meals, especially lunch, if work became too busy. Food was just a necessity to fuel the body for him. But now, the president suddenly started eating fruits regularly to the point that he even set a schedule for Su Tian to deliver him small servings every day. Once in the morning, then as a side with lunch, and then once again in the afternoon. Su Tian wondered if perhaps his boss was on some kind of a special diet. Back at his desk, Jin Liwei quickly finished the papaya. The main reason that he was eating fruits regularly was of course to fulfill his role as test subject for his baby girl's experiment. He would gladly sacrifice his body for the sake of her experiment. He was in an excellent mood for the past few days because she finally began testing her experiment's hypothesis. Needless to say, he felt extremely satisfied every night before they went to sleep. What amazed him the most was that she was an incredibly fast learner. In just a few tries, she already developed her own technique on how to make him come faster. Of course, he tried very hard to delay his ejaculation but to no avail. Just seeing her take him inside her mouth was already enough to make him lose control and send him into overdrive. He remembered what happened last night. They were on the bed. He sat completely naked with his back resting comfortably on pillows stacked before the bed's headboard. On the other hand, Iris was still wearing her full pajamas. He tried taking them off but she swatted his hands. We're conducting an experiment, she told him sternly. I need to keep my wits to focus on the experiment. If I'm also naked, I will most likely get carried away. So don't touch me during the process, okay? Just sit there and let me do the work. He didn't know whether to laugh or cry. She looked so adorable wearing such a serious expression on her face while talking about giving him a blowjob. Finally, they started conducting the experiment. They kissed each other and she started stroking his already excited little brother down below. His hand started roaming under her pajama top, but she slapped his hand and glared at him. She was true to her word. She didn't want him touching her at this time. Sighing, he touched her face and her back instead, struggling very hard to not let his hands wander all over her sexy body. Then she broke the kiss, lowered her head and began taking him inside her mouth. He couldn't help but groan deeply, as he threw his head back and closed his eyes, enjoying the pure pleasure of her hot and wet mouth. He opened his eyes and watched her head bobbing slowly up and down. They stared into each other's eyes as she pleasured him. It was so sensual that Iris also couldn't stop herself from moaning. Baby, let me touch you. For a moment, she was tempted. But then her stubborn determination kicked in. She lightly shook her head and continued bobbing her head up and down while sucking him. Her hands were also busy roaming all over his abdomen, hips, inner thighs, and then to his balls and finally to work in conjunction with her mouth, stroking the base of his shaft. When he started stiffening and panting, she sped up. O-S-H asterisk T, baby. F asterisk C-K. The pleasure was so intense that he couldn't stop himself from cursing. His hips thrust upwards into her mouth. His hand tightened on her hair but when she yelped, he quickly loosened his hold and grabbed the duvet instead, gripping it hard. He released a deep sound which sounded like a combination between a groan and a growl, as he released all of his pleasure inside her mouth. This time, she didn't swallow everything. She only took a small portion in her mouth before quickly pointing his D asterisk CK towards him. Using her hand, she pumped the rest of his ejaculation on his own abdomen. As she did so, she focused on the taste of his semen. There was a look of deep concentration on her face. She frowned for a bit. Hmm, it still tastes bad but yes, there is indeed a slight sweetness to it this time, she murmured. But it's very slight, almost negligible. Let's have you continue to eat fruits. 
When he finished, she climbed off the bed and headed to the bathroom to wash her hands and to rinse her mouth. Then she returned to the room but headed to her study desk instead. She turned on her laptop and started documenting her findings. Jean Leeway sighed as his baby girl completely ignored him. Then his mouth curved into a smug smile, feeling extremely satisfied. He wanted to eat her tonight as well. Perhaps he could get a second round. Just thinking about it was already making him feel aroused again. His limp little brother started stirring back to life. After Iris was done, she headed back to the bed but stopped in her tracks. Her eyes widened seeing him fully erect again. Done with the experiments for tonight, he asked while stroking himself with his hand. She nodded. Good. This time is for us. Okay, baby. She nodded and then hurried back to bed. Her clothes was torn off her in no time. He got what he wanted. He ate her, making her scream, and got a second round. Back to the present. Jean Leeway felt a tightness in his trousers. He sighed, mentally reciting the value of pi to calm himself down. Then the sound of his mobile phone ringing interrupted him. He looked at the caller and immediately answered. Hello, mother. You're tuning in to the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 179 Where's My Grandchild? Son, are you busy? Not too busy. I can talk, Jean Leeway replied. Is there something you need to speak with me about, mother? His mother hesitated before saying, yes. What is it? Silence. He sighed. If it's about the fans, I won't change my mind. Mother, I know that you're close to them and that our family will become in-laws through Chonlin, but these alone don't give them automatic access to Gene Corporation. I'm the head of the company, so I know that they're not compatible with Gene Corporation. Mother, please stop. Son, I didn't call to talk about the fans. Even though your decision makes me sad, I trust in your judgment. I don't understand business, so I can't tell you how to run the company. He felt relieved. So why did you call, mother? His mother paused again. Son. Hmm. Son please tell me do you have a child? His mother's words tumbled out of her mouth in quick succession. Jean Leeway froze, confused. Mother, what are you saying? Please tell me the truth. Did you father a child? She sounded upset. What child? Jean Leeway couldn't believe what he was hearing. He didn't know from where his mother got this ridiculous idea from. He and his baby girl hadn't gone all the way yet, so he knew that she wasn't pregnant. Well, they had ice cream and popcorn but he didn't think his mother would be this distressed for kittens. Don't lie to me. Jean Leeway, I know that you're a successful businessman but you're still my son. Why are you hiding my grandchild? Is it because he or she is illegitimate? I don't care about that. Your grandmother and I will surely love any child of yours. This is the first time that I feel very disappointed of you. How can you hide your own child from us? Where's my grandchild? I want to meet my grandchild. He felt utterly confused. What grandchild? Mother, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have a child. I have two kittens and I consider them my kids. Are you talking about them? Son, I'm serious. What kittens? Don't joke around. I'm talking about a human child. Why are you lying to your own mother? Let me see my grandchild. He closed his eyes and took a couple of deep breaths to calm himself down. He didn't understand what was going on. He was starting to feel annoyed. Mother, I really am not lying. I didn't father any human child. Where did you hear this from? A few seconds of silence. Really? Yes. You're not lying. You really don't have a child. I'm not lying. I already told you I don't have a child, only kittens. 
Then why did you instruct your butler to buy all those baby clothes, toys, and other baby things? And they're for a one-year-old. I also heard that you're not staying at your house anymore, that you've been living with a girlfriend. Tell me, am I not supposed to think that you have a secret family after hearing all of these? Jean Liwei rubbed his temple and sighed. Ah, so it seemed that his mother had a spy in his household. He knew that his butler was loyal and trustworthy. His butler only answered to him and wouldn't betray Jean Liwei's trust even to his mother. He had various suspects in mind, including one of the older maids or the laundress or perhaps even his gardener. These people came from the old house before they transferred to his employment when he bought his Dragon Palace property. Mother, yes, it's true that I'm currently living with my girlfriend but we don't have any children yet. I plan to marry her first before getting her pregnant. He heard his mother gasp. Am Mary? Really? Who's your girlfriend? Why haven't you introduced her to us yet? Son, I know that you like doing your own thing and I respect that. But for important things like these, you should tell me. Don't forget that I'm your mother. I have the right to know these things. I'm already planning to introduce her to you and grandmother, but we have to meet with her family first. Oh. He heard whimpering noises. Mother? Are you crying? Of course I am. I'm so happy that you finally have a girlfriend. To be honest, both your grandmother and I have been so worried that you're gay. Not that we're against it. We love you even if you're really gay. It's just that we want you to father a child naturally with a wife, you know. He rubbed his temples once again. Why does everyone think I'm gay? I don't understand. So tell me about your girlfriend, son. Who is she? What's her name? What is she like? How did you meet? Is she beautiful? You'll know who she is and what she's like when you meet her in person. And yes, she's beautiful. You seem to really like her. You're even living with her. Mother, I love her. I want to marry her and build a family with her. I want her to be the mother of my children. She's the only woman for me. His mother wasn't able to say anything for almost a minute. Oh, oh, oh my. I can't believe I'm listening to you say those words, son. Now I really can't wait to meet your girlfriend. You'll meet her soon. She's currently busy with her work, but I already told her I want to introduce her to you. She already agreed, so we're just waiting for when she's free. But like I said, we're going to meet her family first before you and grandmother. I understand, son. Her voice finally sounded excited. So what about the baby clothes? Who are they for? For my godson. My girlfriend and I became the godparents of her nephew. He's one year old and the son of my girlfriend's older brother, he explained. I see. I understand now. So that's how it is. His mother sighed. I was so shocked when I first heard about it. I really thought that you're hiding a grandchild from me. I felt so excited and upset at the same time. I didn't tell your grandmother because knowing her, she would have already investigated everything. You know what she's like. I didn't want that to happen because I know you wouldn't like it. Besides, I wanted to know the truth from your own mouth and not from a detective. N. Thank you, mother. Afterwards, the mother and son talked about other things. It was mostly her fretting about him, making sure that he was living healthy. Then as if she couldn't help herself, she brought up the fans. I don't know what the fans did wrong, but son, can you please be a little more lenient with them? They're really suffering right now because others are making fun of them, saying that we threw them aside. I feel so sorry for little Luo Luo. She's been crying to me. Mother, please. My decision is final. He gritted his teeth and said, if Chong Lin really wants her as his wife, then it's his freedom to do so. But I see no reason why Jean Corporation should be involved in the marriage. Yes, the company is a family business but please remember that we Jeans are not the only ones who have a claim to it. 
Grandpa Lu is back in the country and as far as I know, he doesn't even know who the fans are. His mother sighed. I know. I don't intend to interfere with the business. I just feel so sorry for the fans, especially for little Luo Luo. Fortunately, she changed the topic and after a few more minutes, they hung up the phone call. Jean Liwei leaned back on his chair, feeling like he just climbed up a mountain and back. However, he also felt like a weight was lifted from his shoulders. Now his mother knew about his girlfriend. He couldn't wait to introduce his shilan to his mother and grandmother. He felt nervous and excited at the same time. As for the fans, he felt displeased that his mother continued to defend them. He needed to be very careful when dealing with them. It wouldn't be so easy to cut them off without triggering huge emotional bombs. Jean Liwei decided that he needed to find the time to speak to his younger brother, Jean Chonglin, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 180 Rightful Throne Upbeat pop remix music boomed inside the home gym. Jean Chong Lin roared as he finished his final burpee. His chest heaved, gasping for air. He was completely drenched in sweat. He removed his sleeveless hoodie, revealing his extremely toned upper body. The sweat accentuated his muscles, especially his eight-pack abs. Lin Dong threw him a bottle of chilled water and a towel. Thanks, he said, immediately chugging the water. Water always tasted the best after an intense workout. He finished the entire bottle, and then began wiping the sweat off his body with the towel. You're falling down the music charts, Lin Dong said. I know. So what are you gonna do about it? What do you mean? You're not gonna post something online to encourage your fans to help boost your music back to the top. Jean Chong Lin pretended to think for a couple of seconds before saying, Nah, not interested. What do you mean you're not interested? You're Jean Chong Lin. What does that even mean? Lin Dong sighed deeply, feeling frustrated. You know exactly what I mean. You're being trampled by a second-rate pop singer who used to chase you around and a horrible theme song from a popular romance TV drama. Second-rate pop singer. Jean Chong Lin threw the towel hard near Lin Dong's feet. He looked furious. Say that again. Ah. Uh. If Iris Long is second-rate, then nobody is first-rate. Are you deaf or what? Have even listened to her music? How dare you call her second-rate? Lin Dong was taken aback by his sudden outburst. He didn't know how to react. I'm Jean Chong Lin. I'm an artist, a musician. I know music when I hear it. I can differentiate between first-rate and second-rate. Don't you dare degrade a musician's work with your careless comments, you bastard. Ah. All right, I get it. Calm down now, okay? I'm sorry. I didn't really mean it, Lin Dong hurriedly said. Humph. Jean Chong Lin glared at his manager one last time before starting his cool-down exercises. Lin Dong sighed. He was careless this time. He momentarily forgot that Jean Chonglin was extremely serious when it came to music. He didn't want to trigger Jean Chonglin again, but he was the manager and it was his job to be concerned about his artist's career. So, are you really not going to do anything about the situation in the music charts? he asked cautiously. No. Jean Chonglin's tone sounded final. Lin Dong sighed. Jean Chong Lin gave his manager a side eye. Why do you look disappointed? My song and album both debuted at number one. I know. But you're not number one anymore. The music charts aren't meant to be dominated by a single artist for a long period of time. If something better is released, then it's only natural that it replaces the one on top. That's just how this game works. So you're admitting that Iris Long's music is better than yours? Jean Chong Lin paused before replying. Yes, her Rebirth album is certainly better than my current album, but that doesn't mean that she's a better musician than me. 
She may have won the battle this time, but she hasn't won the war. She has a long way to go before she can completely defeat me, Jean Chonlin. She needs to get to my level first. Lin Dong sighed again. Let her enjoy the feeling of being on top for now, Jean Chonlin continued as he did some stretching on a mat. She deserves it. Rebirth Melodies is also great in its own right but too bad it's not mainstream. It won't reach the top of the music charts like Rebirth, especially in this country. I think other countries will appreciate it more than here, especially in Europe. They love that kind of instrumental music. It seems that you really think highly of Iris Long now. Like I said, I'm a musician. I respect other musicians who create great music. Iris Long creates great music, at least the music after her comeback. Fine. I get it. Jean Chonglin had a deep and thoughtful expression. You know what? I think I need to thank Iris Long for defeating my music in the music charts. Lin Dong frowned. What is he saying? Did he turn into a masochist? I now realize that I've let fame get into my head and focused too much on pleasing my fans. Analyzing my music from when I just debuted to my current music, I feel very ashamed of myself. I unknowingly lost my true essence as a musician. Ever since I became famous, it was all about choosing the kind of music that will likely sell the most. Listening to Rebirth reminded me that quality music never lies. That's why I'm not going to act bullheaded and insist on boosting my current album when I know that it's inferior to Rebirth. I don't want to sacrifice my dignity as a musician and use my fans to beat someone's music which I know is better than mine. Lin Dong couldn't count how many times he sighed in the last few minutes. Fortunately, I realized this just in time. From now on, I want to return to the basics, to my roots, and to rediscover my true essence as a musician. Eh. Lin Dong didn't understand. Jean Chong Lin gave him a mysterious smile. Like I said, Iris Long still has a long way to go to reach my level. She's not the only one who can compose her own music. Lin Dong looked shocked and then his eyes lit up. You mean? Jean Chong Lin nodded. Yes, I'm going to compose my next music by myself like I used to do when I just debuted. I feel very inspired. I'm not sure whether it's going to be a single or a full album. We'll see. That's great. No, that's awesome. It had been years since Jean Chonglin composed his own music. Lin Dong couldn't help but feel excited, especially because he had been with Jean Chonglin ever since he debuted. Lin Dong smiled and rubbed his hands together. Iris Long, beware. Jean Chonglin is coming. The true king of the music charts will return to take back his rightful throne from you, you're tuning in to the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 181 When Are We Going to Marry? After Jean Chonglin completed his cool-down exercises, he headed for the showers. Lin Dong went to the kitchen for something to eat. As a celebrity, Jean Chonglin was very weight conscious and strict of his own diet so all the food in his kitchen were healthy. Lin Dong sighed looking at the unappetizing choices. In the end, he settled for some dried squid before heading to the living room to watch TV. Finally, Jean Chonglin appeared. His hair was still damp. He went to his kitchen and started cooking. Want some eggs? he hollered to his manager. Yeah. Lin Dong immediately abandoned the dried squid and returned to the kitchen. Within a few minutes, Jean Chonglin cooked egg omelets. He gave two to his manager and made one for himself. Lin Dong started eating immediately, while Jean Chonglin prepared a ripe avocado to go with his own omelette. They were interrupted by the sound of Jean Chonglin's ringing phone. He glanced at the caller. He frowned, deciding not to answer it. Lin Dong could already guess who it was just based on Jean Chonglin's expression. The phone stopped ringing but two seconds later, it rang again. Jean Chonglin sighed deeply before answering the phone. 
His unwillingness was clear on his face. Hello, Xiao Luo. Big Brother Lin, what took you so long to answer my call? Where are you? Who are you with? Fan Luo's voice could be heard even when the call wasn't on speakerphone. Even Lin Dong could hear her. Jean Chong Lin scowled, feeling irritated. She didn't even greet him properly, bombarding him instead with her suspicious questions. Why did you call, Xiao Luo? Oh big brother Lin, you're so cold to me now. She began making crying noises. He fought the urge to roll his eyes. He gave his manager a helpless look. Tell me why you called. I'm your fiancé. Do I need a reason every time I want to call you? We never spend time together anymore. I miss you so much, big brother Lin. Can I come over to your house today? No, he immediately said. Sorry, but I'm busy right now. I'm planning to write my next music so I don't want to be disturbed. Busy. You're always busy every time I want to spend time with you. You don't love me anymore. Jean Chong Lin sighed, looking up at the ceiling. He wished for more patience. He never loved Fan Luo. He only cared about her as a childhood friend and almost like a sister. Then he became attracted to her body as a lover. Recently, however, Fan Luo was getting on his nerves more frequently that he could feel his heart turning cold towards her. Xiao Luo, if that's all you have to say, I'm hanging up. No. Please don't, big brother Lin. I need to talk to you. All right. What do you want to talk about? Big brother, when are we going to marry? We've been engaged for almost two years now, but you still won't allow me to start planning our wedding. Everyone is getting impatient. Our parents want to have grandchildren soon. He frowned. It's not the right time yet. You always say that. When will be the right time for you? If I continue to wait, I'll be an old maid by then. I told you I'm busy right now. I have a lot of work commitments that I just can't abandon. Big brother, you're Jean Chong Lin. You're already a big star. It won't hurt you even if you take an entire year off or more. Xiao Luo. You don't know how brutal it is working in showbiz. Don't talk like you know what it's like. Becoming a big star doesn't give anyone immunity in this industry. Why are you yelling at me, she whined. You've become so harsh to me. Jean Chonglin closed his eyes and took a few deep breaths. When he calmed down a little, he said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yell at you. I just don't like that you make it sound as if showbiz is easy when it isn't. All right, big brother, she said. Even if you're treating me so coldly and harshly, I still love you. Mm. He made a noise, neither agreeing nor disagreeing. So can we marry soon? He scowled. I think that we should marry soon and prove to everyone that our families are still close as ever. You don't know how my family is suffering right now. She began sobbing. Oh big brother Lin, everyone is mocking us because Gene Corporation doesn't want to work with our company anymore. They're saying that our families have become estranged and that our wedding is cancelled. My entire fan family feels so humiliated. My mother and I are both suffering from depression. My dad, brothers and uncles barely have any face left in the business industry. Why is elder brother Li Wei suddenly acting so cruel to us? I'm sure my brother has a reason. Don't think too much about it, he told her. But big brother Lin. We can't take the mockery and humiliation any longer. Elder brother Li Wei refuses to give us an explanation. Even when auntie spoke to him on our behalf, he's still continuing to be cruel to us. Jean Chong Lin didn't like how she was accusing his older brother. He might not be very close to his older brother especially in recent years but Jean Li Wei was still his brother. He felt defensive hearing other people badmouthing his family. It's not my brother's fault. He's not the one mocking or humiliating your family. All he did was to reject your company's business proposals. My brother is an excellent businessman. 
all of us genes trust in his leadership. I'm sure that he has a logical reason for his decision to reject your company's proposals. Perhaps there's something wrong with the proposals you presented. What logical reason? He just clearly hates us. And our proposals are perfect. Fan Luo was beyond reason now. Stop it. I refuse to talk to you if you continue being unreasonable like this. Stop blaming my brother, do you understand? Then he hung up the phone without waiting for her reply, you're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories.